What's up guys? It's yo boy on this insane. Welcome to, What If I Was Reborn in Cobra Kai? Becoming the Dragon Warrior, Part 3. Remember to check out the original story, the link is in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. Ash left the dojo very late, making sure to drop Devin off at her house before returning to his own. Just after stopping by the supermarket where Victor had informed him about the new Cobra Kai dojo. Cobra Kai Karate, so they are the same from a long time ago Dash smiled slightly and left after seeing what he wanted. Aren't you going to clean those windows? Johnny Lawrence's voice came from inside the Cobra Kai dojo, as he noticed the movements of his first student, Miguel Diaz, who had inspired him to reopen this dojo. Miguel was looking out the window as a car stopped outside the dojo, but that car seemed familiar, he had seen it somewhere, but couldn't remember where. After the car left without parking, he continued cleaning the windows. Is there something interesting outside? Johnny approached the window and looked outside, only to see the empty parking lot. Miguel smiled and shook his head. I thought I saw a familiar car, but I doubt it. What else do you want me to do after cleaning the windows, sensei? Just go home, yes sensei. Miguel looked at his sensei's back and smiled happily at the opportunity to learn from him. When Dash returned, it was already very late. His parents, who lately spent more time at home since the family had grown, were together. Many teenagers might have been bothered by this, questioning why their parents are now coming home when they didn't do so when they were younger. However, Dash had no issue with it, so he completely ignored it. Again at the dojo until late. Elena asked, watching her children play. Awards aren't won by training for just a few hours, mother. You should know that better than anyone Dash responded straightforwardly, just as his personality was. Think about spending some time with your siblings. They enjoy playing with you, so just consider it. Elena didn't look at him when she said this, as Dash had entered the kitchen to grab something to eat. Dash came out with a big piece of cake and said, Come on, mother, you know they don't need that when they have Jack and Aiden around all the time. I don't believe at all that you've become more affectionate with more children. I didn't need your presence to grow, and I suppose they don't need it either. Dependency is bad. Frederick looked at his wife and said, he's right, don't press him about the siblings issue again. You'll only push him further away, as we haven't taken care of him as well as we are doing now with Aiden and Jack. Elena sighed, unable to say anything more to her son, and he disappeared from the room. She wanted to say more, but it was true that she had neglected her son a lot, and perhaps that had pushed him away from parental dependency. For a long time, she heard her friends talk about how their children can be a headache in simple situations of companionship. She never felt this with Dash, he never came to her or his father to cry, and the only thing that bothered them was something he couldn't handle. Elena knew that was the education she had given her son, but for some reason, as Dash grew up, she felt him becoming more distant. She wanted to try a new method with her children that she had learned, and things improved just as expected. It wasn't bad, just that not having done it with Dash from an early age, it was normal for him to act that way. After taking a shower, Dash lay on his bed, took out his cell phone, and started reading the comments on his YouTube channel, where he taught kung fu moves with a rooster mask. Currently, he had over a million followers. Many followed him just because he once appeared in a video fighting with a chicken mask, and his fame skyrocketed from there. Then he started responding to people's messages. I don't have an ugly face, and I don't wear the mask for that reason. Besides, remember that appearance doesn't matter much. A few seconds later, he received a response. If your face is attractive, why the hell do you wear a mask? Dash sighed and turned off his phone. Social media is scary tomorrow, he would visit the Cobra Kai dojo, and he was a bit excited. Moreover, it would be interesting to offer something if it was the person he was imagining. It will be a lot of fun. The next day, Dash attended school as usual, and during lunchtime, they were discussing what to do before heading to the dojo. Do you want to know more about that place? Devin picked up her lunch tray and lined up while waiting for her food. Dash sighed and said, you know we excel when it comes to kung fu, but most students here come to the dojo to train in karate, because of the championships won this year. So, my idea to further improve the place is to open a new dojo under Sakura Bushido's management, where only karate is taught. The night before, Dash had thought about it. It would be amazing if Cobra Kai were bought by Sakura Bushido, creating a branch exclusively for karate, separating it from the kung fu school. Many people had wondered how they participated in karate tournaments when they were learning kung fu. However, these same people didn't understand that learning kung fu meant combining karate skills with others. But wanting to achieve something much better, Dash wanted to split the two schools and have cleaner concepts in both. 
During lunchtime at school, Dash wasn't in the mood to argue with anyone, so he preferred to spend his time in the cafeteria. Many people avoided being there because there were better places like the fields to spend time. Taking the food tray, Devon had to admit what Dash said about the school, and she murmured, This does feel like a reform school now. The problem is we've never been in one. Dash pointed to a table with two empty seats and said, Let's go to that table. Before sitting with unpleasant people, I'd rather be with strangers. Walking to the table, Dash took a step forward and asked, Do you mind if we take these empty seats? There were three guys who seemed friendly, although one of them appeared very reserved, hiding a scar on his lip. No, go ahead, sit. Dash nodded politely, and Devon, who was reading about today's homework, shook her head and said, This homework is crap. The food they give us here is garbage. Only now did Dash remember why he disliked eating in this place. I'm Miguel. Miguel said, looking at Dash, who was looking disgusted at his food. Oh, nice to meet you Miguel. I'm Dash, and this is Devon. Dash glanced at Devon, who nodded slightly at the guys before focusing on what she was reading. I'm Dimitri, and he's Eli. Dimitri didn't understand what Dash was doing at their table, but didn't want to dwell on it. Still, his curiosity got the better of him, and he asked, Dash, if you don't mind me asking, why choose the table of the weirdest guys in the whole cafeteria, when you could easily sit with someone else? Dash, playing with the worse than hospital jelly, looked up and said, Well, they were the quietest, so I thought it would be nice for everyone to have lunch together. Good choice, Eli is a man of few words, Dimitri raised his eyebrows, and now understood what Dash meant. Aren't you having lunch? Dash looked at Devon upon hearing her question and said, Sorry, but the only thing I'm going to eat is this drink. We'll endure until we leave this place and get something better. Miguel stared at Dash for a moment, and his first impression was that he was a pleasant, calm, and compass person. His attire didn't give away much, and he seemed indifferent to others. At that moment, Dash, who had taken a sip of Devon's drink, noticed three girls, one of whom stared at Devon for a few seconds before looking away. Samantha LaRusso, who looked at Dash, smiled slightly before averting her gaze, feeling a bit uncomfortable. Miguel, sitting across from Dash, looked away and seemed to have lost track of time until Dimitri said, Friend, don't torture yourself. They're the rich girls. He's right, you'll be better off not getting involved with those girls, Dash nodded at Dimitri's words, who seemed to be well aware of his limits, something not everyone understood, and things often went wrong. Not a bad piece of advice Eli finally spoke after not seeing any disdain in Dash's eyes when talking to them. Miguel looked at Dash and asked, do you know them? Only LaRusso, but not well enough to talk to them. Dash responded simply, as if he didn't care. I had the satisfaction of hitting her in the face in front of more than 500 people. She used to be nice, but now she hangs out with friends who aren't really her friends, so it seems like puberty is affecting her. Devon left Miguel and the others with the words stuck in their throats. Miguel looked at Dimitri and asked the guys next to him, Have you ever talked to them? Yes, all the time. Dimitri responded sarcastically and exaggerated. We hang out after school, kiss, grope each other, and such. Eli here is the king of the dance floor. He sleeps with more girls than anyone, right Eli? The moment Miguel heard that response, he regretted asking again. But Dimitri, who had forgotten that two other people were sitting in front of him, said, Do you know what table you're sitting at? You've abandoned any hope of losing your virginity before college. Devon, of course, was indifferent to these comments. Any unnecessary garbage she heard went in one ear ran out the other. But Miguel coughed awkwardly, knowing that there was a girl at the table with them. Although I don't want the jelly, it would be a waste to throw it away. Do you guys want this? We haven't touched it. Dash looked up, and the moment he saw the reserved Eli, he heard him say, Damn, Yasmin is watching us. Eli, next to Miguel, muttered, surely she's making fun of me. Miguel exaggerated, thinking these thoughts were extreme, and pointed out, they're not making fun of you. Devon turned around, and after seeing the smiles of those girls, she returned her gaze forward. Don't pay attention, surely one of us is making fun of them. I'm tired of this situation. Should we look for them outside of school? Dash looked at Devon, who seemed very calm and smiled mischievously when he asked this question. Forget it, I'm not going to fight with her. Dash didn't want anything extreme outside of tournaments, so he refused. Dash raised his eyebrows slightly and murmured, Then if there won't be a fight, let's leave. Take the food you want with confidence. He lied to Dash's untouched food tray, so he took the things he liked the most without caring about anything else. Devon, who packed her things, said, Have more confidence in yourselves, join some kind of sport, and surely what others think of you won't matter. I'd listen to Devon, she's very right. Dash smiled friendly as he walked away from the cafeteria. By the time Devon and Dash left, Miguel looked at Dimitri and asked, Did they really just come here to see if someone would pick a fight with them? Dimitri sighed and said, The guy named Dash's family is the richest of all the students you see here, but unlike everyone else who is known, he's not an idiot. Hell, he's on the damn debate team with his girlfriend. The girl who was beside him was his girlfriend. Miguel was surprised, and then things didn't seem so strange when he remembered how they behave. 
Eli smiled and said, they make a good couple. I heard Dash almost got into a fight with Kyler. That's the connection I'm talking about. You don't need to have a sexy girlfriend to feel true love. Dimitri pointed this out as he looked at Eli and Miguel. By the time classes ended, Dash spent some time at Devin's house before deciding to visit the new dojo that had been opened. He couldn't help but mention that he was very excited about it. As they were on their way to the dojo, they didn't talk about anything special, but it wasn't a boring day either because nothing is truly boring. A few more minutes of driving, Dash parked outside the dojo and got out while looking at the Cobra logo. Just outside, there was a woman who, for obvious reasons, seemed to be homeless, and before entering, Dash took out a bill. Oh no, kid, this lady may live on the street, but I don't offer my body for money. Devin, who was silent, mocked Dash when she saw his indescribable expression. Haha, <laughs> I never thought this would happen someday. Dash filled with regret when he heard Devin's continuous teasing and, after taking a deep breath, said, it's for her to buy some clothes. The cold season is coming, so she should buy something warm. Isn't it fake? I would take it if I were you, lately, there are many counterfeit bills circulating in the country. Devin, who enjoyed Dash's small misfortunes, couldn't help but say this. After the awkward and amusing moment for Devin, Dash felt a bit annoyed and chose not to talk for a while. He felt a bit offended and embarrassed for some reason, and in confusion, Dash entered the dojo that seemed to be open. Devin, who was in a good mood, entered and took off her shoes just before stepping on the mat, looking around before seeing two familiar trophies. Look at these trophies, I never thought they would be similar to ours. Dash looked in the direction Devin was pointing, so he approached and said, since it's a very traditional tournament, they must be very keen on making the trophies similarly. Although he was a bit annoyed, it didn't mean that he was really upset with Devin. This annoyance was directed towards himself for several reasons. Are you interested in learning how to throw punches? At that moment, the voice of an older man came from what seemed to be an office. Dash turned and saw John Lawrence, Johnny to be more precise if you used his nickname. This was the man Dash was very familiar with, so after seeing him, he approached to greet him. Sorry for entering without notifying anyone, we saw it open, so we thought it was open. Dash greeted Johnny formally, who seemed more excited than he would normally be. So, are you here to join the dojo? Johnny looked at these two young people who seemed interested in the dojo, so he asked very enthusiastically. Dash smiled uncomfortably and said, we just wanted to see the place. We had heard that a dojo had opened, and it was the historic Cobra Kai, which was a champion twice in the past. When he heard these words, Johnny, who seemed very excited, sighed and stopped paying much attention. To be honest, he was very interested in having students to pay the bills, but if these two young people weren't interested in joining the dojo, there was no need to talk about the past. It's an honor that you know the Cobra Kai of the past, but now all that past will stay buried in those dates, and what you're seeing will be a new Cobra Kai, that will eventually regain its former glory. Devin frowned and pointed out, you say it's not related to the past, but you want to seek the glory of the past. Those would be two similar topics that contradict your words. What do you mean? Johnny frowned, evidently confused. Dash at this point intervened directly, what Devin means is that you want to leave some things in the past, but you're using others to teach. You should consider changing the routine a bit. Johnny turned his head slightly and asked, what's your name? Dash, pleased to meet you, sensei. Dash extended his hand again. Devin, nice to meet you sensei. Unaware of Johnny's thoughts, Dash walked through the dojo and said, I understand that you don't have students. Johnny coughed a bit and said, I have one student, he's so strong that he fought against 10 gang members and beat them all with one hand. At that very moment, as if Johnny summoned his bad luck, a voice came from the door, oh my god, sensei, a damn duck just beat me up. By the time Miguel, who had arrived at the dojo, entered, he shouted these words since he knew the place was always empty. However, when he entered, he fell silent upon seeing two unfamiliar people in front of him. Sensei, about the duck white, go change. Johnny shouted very annoyed to have boasted about his student Miguel Diaz, and have him ruin it the next moment. I'll tell you about the duck later Miguel disappeared from the place, going straight to the bathrooms to change. Dash, who turned to see the student Johnny was talking about, was surprised that it was Miguel. It seems that his potential in karate should be at a very high level to be a student, and the first one in this place. He didn't know why, but now it seems that the roles used in the previous story involving Daniel LaRusso, had been reversed, and now Dash's challenging talent for the tournament would be Miguel. I don't want to take much of your time, I just wanted to make you a proposal. Dash shook his head and directed his attention to Johnny, who seemed uncomfortable. Tell me, what do you have in mind? Johnny asked in a rushed tone. Are you willing to join your dojo with the Sakura Bushido Martial Arts School? What are you trying to say? Johnny didn't understand what exactly a young man, not much older than Miguel, was trying to convey, so he was a bit confused. Dash understood the confusion and clarified, Sakura Bushido is a kung fu school, but we lack a good karate teacher. Karate is one of the disciplines in which we actively participate in this country, and to be honest, we would like to have Cobra Kai affiliated with us. 
This wasn't about integrating Cobra Kai with Sakura Bushido, but having Cobra Kai as a karate school for Sakura Bushido's students. However, Johnny Lawrence didn't understand this, so he refused, saying, Cobra Kai is not for sale. If that's all you want to say, you can leave the way you came in. You know the exit. Devin raised her eyebrows slightly and said, it's just a proposal. If you accept immediately, you'll have 50 students under your teaching. The only thing that would change is that, in real competitions, Cobra Kai would be a school under the control of Sakura Bushido. You would have the privileges that our Kung Fu school has abroad, immediately gaining a solid foundation to start teaching. Dash nodded at Devon's words, she perfectly described what he meant. He added, of course, to get all this, you just need to change your training routine a bit. Striking first is old and questionable, it would only create students with affected mentalities. Dash's words were sincere, he didn't want to offend Cobra Kai, but give advice from his humble knowledge. However, it seemed like he was achieving the opposite. Johnny Lawrence was no longer interested, he had full confidence that he would make Cobra Kai grow, so he didn't need third parties to improve his reputation and get students. I appreciate your high regard for me, but I decline. Cobra Kai wouldn't be a branch of another school. Johnny was confident in his words, so he didn't want to talk more. Looking at Miguel, who was coming out of the bathroom, Dash smiled a bit disappointed and said, then we'll see you at the All Valley Tournament. Surely the competition will be much more exciting now with Cobra Kai in the arena. I'll send you a gift wishing you luck for opening a new dojo, karate is not dead, Mr. Lawrence. Dash, wait. Miguel, who had recognized the visitors, quickly wanted to greet them. Devon and Dash, who were putting on their shoes, turned their gaze toward the voice. When they saw who it was, they smiled. You're the star of Cobra Kai, I couldn't have imagined it if they had told me. Dash didn't underestimate Miguel, but wanted to be a bit more sarcastic in a friendly way. Miguel smiled a bit embarrassed and said, I thought you were interested in joining Cobra Kai. Aren't you interested in joining? Mr. Lawrence is a great sensei, he's helping me a lot in my growth. We don't doubt that, Miguel, but we already belong to Sakura Bushido, and we're not here to look for a dojo. Dash then adjusted his shoelaces, and before leaving, he said, You have a great teacher, make the most of it, and learn as much as you can, since he has a lot to teach you. Oh, thanks, see you at school. Devon didn't say anything as they left Cobra Kai, and when both left, Johnny, who was standing in the middle of the dojo, shouted, What the hell are you doing, greeting the enemy? Enemy. Miguel was still paralyzed at hearing that. Johnny nodded and said, They came to close Cobra Kai and take me to teach at their dojo. I prevented you from fighting on my behalf because you're not ready. Next time, we'll visit their dojo, so let's train. They wanted to take him away. Miguel still didn't comprehend Johnny's brief words. Silence, give me 500 squats. Miguel closed his eyes a bit confused and replied, Won't I die if I do 500? Silence. Do what I tell you and don't question my teachings. Johnny said a bit embarrassed because he wanted to say 50, but thought it would sound better with an extra zero. Do you know about the Sakura Bushido Martial Arts School? Miguel asked Johnny amidst his training. Johnny sighed, I have no idea about that school. I guess there are many other good martial arts schools out there, so we must prepare. Come on, give me more squats. I have a pain in my ribs, sensei. What are you doing? Breaks are not allowed during training. After leaving the dojo, Dash didn't feel like persisting in something he knew from the beginning couldn't be achieved. If things unfold this way, the atmosphere in this place might become more exciting. On the next day, which was the day of the debate, Dash was lounging on a long table where they were preparing, and he said, I never thought this debate would be so intense, much more exciting than the previous ones, if you ask me. Bert was standing nearby, nervously reading the arguments he had to present. Upon hearing Dash's words, he turned his head slightly and asked confused, how can you be so calm just when we are about to enter the debate? Dash sighed and furred his eyebrows. Well, let's say I've been subjected to many surprises in my life, so these kinds of emotions don't destabilize my behavior. Devon approached with a bunch of sheets filled with information and looked at Dash, noticing that he hadn't touched the sheets she had given him. After staring at him for a few seconds, she asked, Do you intend to study a bit? It would be embarrassing if you stayed silent in front of the students who entered the debate. Relax, I have everything under control. Dash didn't want to say anything, but he had to keep Devon calm, as it would benefit him before entering the debate. The last time, he ended up arguing with a girl discussing racism, and he won because the girl had mentioned that people like Devon, migrated to another country just to seek new benefits, when the Lee family primarily lived here for work. That fight, which wasn't really a fight as it ended before getting exciting, remained in Dash's memories because of how amusing it had been. At the moment, Devon was more than excited. This was her first debate with open doors for any school student to optionally enter the auditorium to listen to the entire debate. The rumor that Devon had fought in her previous debate had spread throughout the school, and the auditorium slowly filled with curious students who expected to see something exciting. It was well known that the debate club auditorium was empty, unless some students were practically forced to participate in case something discussed would appear on an exam. 
But in most cases, this place was empty. However, today, without anyone forcing anyone to participate, the place filled up very quickly. Have you seen how handsome Dash Hale is? I wonder if he has a girlfriend, it would be amazing to have him as a boyfriend. Well, Daydream, he has a girlfriend, and it's the same girl he will debate against today. They never separate, so the chances of you talking to him are very low. I bet $5 there will be a fight. I don't think so, but it would be incredible if it happened, even if I lose the $5. Dash, who came out of the preparation room, opened his eyes wide to see so many people and murmured, I told you that attracting attention in a debate is a bad idea. You seem to be more famous with just a silly fight than being a three-time karate champion. Devin smiled and looked at the now fully packed place. She had been preparing for this debate for a long time, and was very grateful that she would be heard at least. She quickly walked over to the teacher who would be the judge in the debate, and they waited for everything to be ready to start. The judge, a woman, nodded when she saw everyone was ready to start. She raised her hands and said, You have five minutes per participant, let the first two go to debate, and we will start with arguments against animal experimentation. Devon stood up and walked to the podium where there was an active microphone. The same happened on the other side of the team, who aimed to present their argument against. The girl with glasses looked at Devon with a challenging smile and began to speak with a clear voice. Today, the need for strict control over animal experimentation worldwide has become an obligation and not a necessity. It is proven that in Europe, there are good standards of animal welfare based on knowledge, but it is not the case in other countries. If we don't do something now, the goal of achieving what is sought by regulating animal experimentation will be a lost moral advance in society. Every year, more than 115 million animals, counting only vertebrates, are subjected to experimentation supposedly for the benefit of humans. This includes practices such as forcing them to inhale toxic gases, applying corrosive substances to their skin and eyes, infecting them with HIV, or removing part of their brains. She paused briefly and pointed out, certainly, the number of non-human animals that suffer and die due to these practices, is much lower than those victims of the food industry or individuals in the wild, who suffer from natural events. Now, since the basic interests of these non-human animals are not suffering and not dying matter, it is still necessary to reflect on whether experimenting on them is ethically justified. The speech against animal experimentation was well-crafted, perfect if Dash had to give his opinion on the words that the girl had said. Everyone knew that the debate club was one of the most challenging because not many were qualified to communicate, but the level they were debating right now had exceeded their imagination. I yield my time, said the girl on the opposing side, almost finishing her time. Opening the topic, Devin glanced slightly at the sheets full of information in her hands, and because it was her turn to open the debate in favor of animal experimentation. Everyone must feel bad about the little knowledge they have on the topic, but let me tell you that animal experimentation has played a vital role in almost all medical discoveries of the last decade. Devin made a clever pause now that everyone paid attention to her and said in a strong tone, almost every Nobel Prize in medicine winner since 1901 has relied on data obtained from animal models. Believe it or not, we share 95% of our genes with mice, making them an effective model to apply to humans. Animals and humans are very similar, we have the same organic systems performing the same functions more or less in the same way. Animals suffer from diseases similar to humans, including cancer, tuberculosis, influenza, and asthma. All veterinary research has used animal experimentation. While alternative methods to animals play an important role, they cannot completely replace the use of animal experimentation, and that is something important to understand. When saying this, Devon looked at the glasses-wearing girl who thought she had done a good job and pointed out, in vitro techniques and computerized models complement animal models. Many veterinary medicines are the same as those used in humans, including antibiotics, analgesics, and tranquilizers. Modern anesthetics, tetanus vaccines, penicillin, and insulin, have depended on animal experimentation for their development. Modern surgical techniques, including hip prosthesis, kidney transplants, heart transplants, and blood transfusions, have been perfected using animals, and that's something everyone should be thankful for. Diagnostic techniques such as CT scans and magnetic resonance imaging, have been developed using animals. While Devon opened the topic in favor, many of those who were here just to see some excitement were left open mouthed because they sincerely believed until now, that the idea of being in favor of animal experimentation, was gaining more weight, as the arguments in favor became increasingly tough. Thanks to animal experimentation, mainly in mice, cancer survival rates have increased. Dosuzumab, Herceptin, a humanized mouse protein, has helped increase the survival rate of cancer patients. Devon looked at the people and pointed out, all this could not have been obtained without research on mice. Thanks to animal experimentation, therapies with highly active antiretroviral therapies, heart, have been developed, by which AIDS has ceased to be the death sentence it was 30 years ago. While Fleming discovered penicillin without using animals, he shared the Nobel Prize with Florian Chain, who, by experimenting on mice, discovered that it could be used to combat infections. 
Animal research has allowed the development of inhalers for asthma. Asthma kills 200,000 people each year. Animal experimentation has helped develop vaccines, such as those against polio, tuberculosis, meningitis, and recently, human papillomavirus, HPV, which is related to cervical cancer. Devon said as she analyzed the time she had left. At the end, Devon looked at the team that was against and asked, do you still think the same way? Dash, who was next after delivering lengthy speeches about why Devon's statement was not integrated into moral ethics, walked slowly and began, let me ask you something, do you believe in statistics? Dogs, cats, and primates make up 0.2% of experimental animals. 97% of research in the UK is conducted on mice, rats, fish, and birds. The UK consumes 300 times more fish each year than the total number of animals used for medical research. Domestic cats kill approximately 5 million animals each week, more than the total number of animals used for experimentation every year. Dash mocked those who still supported the opposing argument and said, The number of chickens consumed in a year in this country alone is greater than the number of all animals used for animal experimentation in the last two centuries in Great Britain. Animal experimentation has been crucial in all medical discoveries of the last century. It has saved hundreds of millions of lives worldwide, Dash said, sharpening his tone, and pointed out, But none of you, before empathizing with the arguments against, think about where your cough medicine came from. There are ethical committees that ensure potential benefits far outweigh the possible suffering inflicted on animals, so complaints are made only to draw attention and ask for something they don't need. Dash, in his debate, was not very interested in being part of where he agreed. He used all his knowledge to deduce whether he was for or against, and why he decided to act that way. It's not easy to align oneself where the division is so significant that it causes disasters, but this time Dash totally agreed with animal experimentation. He had died simply because he didn't get new lungs in time, which ended all hopes of recovery before waking up in this world. It sounds ironic, but Dash should witness numerous deaths due to lack of proper medical knowledge, so if animal experimentation serves any purpose, it's for this, and he was totally in favor. Of course, as long as it is for medical development and human evolution, as for experimentation with chemical weapons, he was completely against it, and repudiated the creation of weapons of mass destruction. Devon, listening to Dash speak in that tone and using statistics she had researched herself, became excited. She knew he didn't need much study to do things right, so she was glad they were doing a good job. But even though we support this, no one is insensitive to animal suffering. For this reason, animal welfare is backed by the three RS. It is a legal imperative to replace animals with alternatives to their use, refine experimental techniques to avoid animal suffering, and reduce the number of animals used in research. By the time Dash had finished speaking, he wiped some sweat from his forehead and said, I yield my time. You did a good job, now let's see what Bert will do, Devon murmured with a smile on her face. When they started the last speech against, Dash could tell that this debate was very well prepared, and in theory, the school was preparing students from a very young age to participate in the debate contest that would take place the following year. Therefore, the most outstanding teams would be called. To conclude the debate, Bert talked about the consequences of stopping animal experimentation, and the advances in humanity that had been obtained. Without research with animals, medicine would come to a halt. Think about organ transplants. Without animal testing, nothing would have been possible. Dash, who heard this, felt strange and muttered, we should have electric organs. Devon, who was next to Dash, lightly hit him to keep quiet and not be observed with an unprofessional attitude. Alright, with this, we finish the debate, and the results will be decided by the audience entering the QR code on the screen, you decide who won. The goal each team pursues in a debate is to see public opinion, no matter what they claim. They have to win over the public, only then would they achieve their goal. After many entered the massive QR code with their phones, the voting ended after 5 minutes, and the judge said, 89% in favor of animal experimentation, 11% against, congratulations to the blue team. When they heard the winner, many applauded, and as for Dash's group, they celebrated for having won. After the debate, Dash and the others went to the cafeteria for lunch. Towards the end, Devin asked Dash why they were in this place if they didn't like the food. I need to go to the bathroom, you can eat my food if you want. Devon looked at Dash's untouched tray of food, and wondered why he bothered taking it if he wouldn't eat it. Dash, reading Devon's thoughts perfectly, said, You know I take the food because if anyone finds out we're not eating, they might call our parents and talk to them about our situation at school. Does the school do that? Bert, sitting nearby, asked somewhat confused. Devon, who had stood up, said, They call even if you're absent for a few days, you can't miss school here, or the police end up taking over. I experienced that with the police years ago, Dash recalled when the police came to his house, because he had missed a few days without notifying them due to training. That was his first non-serious punishment from his parents. Looking at Devon, who had left, Dash turned his head slightly and asked Bert, who was eating, is anyone bothering you at school? Eh? 
No, but even if they did, I couldn't defend myself, Bird replied while leading his jelly in a very normal manner. The way some teenagers face their problems makes them seem much more normal than they should, which is really a bit sad to hear. Dash, about to respond, saw a guy approaching their table with somewhat strange intentions. What do you want? I was sent to tell you that they're waiting for you in the bathrooms, and if you don't go, they'll beat you up in front of everyone. The guy, who was extremely nervous about doing this, looked at Dash's expression and relaxed upon seeing him calm. Dash understood what was going on, so he asked, how many of them? About four well, they can wait until the break is over, I won't fall for their silly games. I thought Brooks was smarter than this, Dash didn't want to fight because he had promised Evan. The guy, seeing Dash's disinterest, muttered, they said they'll bother your girlfriend if you don't go now, that's all they told me. They're waiting for you in the bathroom. By the time Dash had dismissed any aggressive action, he fell silent upon hearing that they intended to mess with Devin, who hadn't bothered anyone. At that moment, he stood up and walked slowly to the bathrooms. Wait, Dash, let's better inform a teacher about this, they would be punished Bert followed, trying to appease his thoughts. But now that Dash was determined to do anything, there was nothing to stop him. Dash looked at Bert and said, guard the door, let me know if you see anyone coming in. Upon reaching the bathrooms, Dash saw four guys, and Brooks was nowhere to be found, but he knew perfectly well that this was his action because there was a friend of his among the four inside. There are things I would do for my girlfriend, but being in a damn debate club is being a lapdog. Damn it, I don't know what that idiot sees in Devon haha, ha. it's crazy, buddy, that guy looks good enough to waste it in a damn club. It really is crazy what I'm about to do, Dash entered the bathrooms and looked at the guys who were mocking in a rude way. I promise I won't break your bones, I'll just leave you with some bruises. One of the big guys turned around, but at that moment, a punch landed forcefully on his nose, and as if a water tap had been opened, blood splattered eagerly. Thud. 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 In a street fight, the most important thing is not to get involved, but if it's inevitable, and you're also fighting at a disadvantage, the most important thing is to go first for the biggest, and hit hard enough to leave him on the ground. By the time Dash hit the first guy, the others rushed at him, but at that moment, punches started raining down on them from an unknown source. Bert, who was outside and saw the first guy fall to the ground, got scared, ran to the women's bathrooms, and when he saw Devin, he shouted, This is serious, Dash is in trouble. Devin looked at Bert's pale expression and said confused, he probably fell asleep am I wrong? You're wrong, he's fighting in the bathrooms. Damn it, I told him not to fight. Devin ran following Bert, and by the time they entered the men's bathrooms, the fight was over. Dash, who was a bit breathless, was hitting the mouth of one of those who were talking nonsense about his relationship with Devin. At least, this would teach them a lesson about not talking about others and not getting into trouble again. Stop, Dash. Devin ran and pulled Dash away from the guy with the bloody mouth. After managing to pull him away, she held his face. You'll get expelled if you don't leave now, listen to me and let's get out of this place. When Dash heard Devin's voice, all that fury began to fade from his body, and taking control of his decisions, he smiled a bit, seeing that those guys would surely stop bothering them from today onwards. Those idiots will think twice before messing with us Dash, who was being let out of the bathrooms, smiled as if nothing else mattered. Upon exiting, Devin looked at Bert, who was standing at the entrance of the bathroom, and asked, Do you know what to do? I'll take care of it, get Dash out of here. Bert nodded slightly nervously, seeing all that blood, so after regaining his composure and seeing that Dash and Devin had walked far enough, he shouted, Help, call someone. They're fighting in the bathrooms, do something. When Bert was little, they always told him that he was incredibly good at lying, so seeing how things had turned out, he needed to help Dash, who seemed like a good guy, or else he would be expelled. When the teachers arrived, they were immediately alarmed by the guys who could barely stand, so after seeing that there were no fatal injuries on their bodies, they took them to the infirmary. Bert gave his version of the events, saying that those guys were fighting in the bathrooms just when he wanted to pee, so he walked away and started calling the teachers. Many believed him because he was a kid no older than 10, so after calming things down, they would figure out what would be more convenient. On the way, Dash held Devin's hand and asked, Are you scared? You know this doesn't scare me, I'm just covering your back, and you're a headache every time you get into trouble. Devin said, looking sternly at Dash before dragging him to the debate club. Dash understood, but if someone messed with the people he cared about, he would never stop. Did anyone see you? Devin, after dragging Dash to a small room inside the debate club, looked at her bloody knuckles, and she asked him in a very calm manner. Dash shook his head. No one saw me, those bullies probably don't have the courage to mess with us again either. In every serious moment she felt protected by Dash, it was a unique sensation that only she could allow herself, and this eventually made her begin to feel something more than friendship for him. She didn't care to know what would happen in the future, nor did she want to find out if this was a good idea. The only thing she wanted now was to have Dash close to her, and only from this moment on would she be in charge of protecting him just as he had done. Don't fight for me again, do you understand that? 
Devon asked, totally against Dash fighting for her, especially in a place where he could end up in a bad position like he was at school. Dash looked into Devon's serious eyes and nodded. I won't fight for you again, but I can't promise that I won't fight back if they step forward first. Knowing that Devon didn't want to be a protege, Dash understood that she meant that she was worried about him getting into unnecessary trouble. Being now 16 years old, fighting with younger boys was not a very good thing, plus he was a year behind because he previously lost years before being able to enter a school. Devon on her side was 14, she stayed in good shape and looked older, because since she was little she began training at the same time as Dash and Kung Fu. They were both mature, they perfectly understood the types of scenarios that would happen, if either of them decided to take a step in their relationship, that she purely started to become a romantic one. Everyone had the right to feel her love, it was not a crime that he was now infatuated with her. Time would judge their relationship, so making a decision Dash held Devon's cheeks and gave him a kiss, while she looked for the things she would use to clean Dash's wounds. That kiss took Devon by surprise, she couldn't react in time, and after a few seconds when she knew what was happening, she closed her eyes, letting this sensation pass. Being their first kiss, everything was very clumsy, but the butterflies began to be felt inside their bodies. Devon, who at first wanted to resist because she was afraid to take the first step, let herself go and soon began to reciprocate that kiss. By the time they were both running out of air, they heard sounds coming from the entrance to the debate classroom, and because they had the door open to the room they were in they both stopped. We won't ruin it, don't be afraid. Dash said as he went first next to the first aid kit into the room and sat on a table to treat his wounds that were bleeding a little. When the two girls who were outside entered they learned that someone was already in the room, so they politely greeted Dash, who had a very admirable appearance. Members later Devon came out of the room where they stored things with her face still a little red, and after greeting the girls who were in the distance she sat down in front of Dash to help him. We won't tell our parents. Devon at one point brought this up because it would be so embarrassing. Dash smiled slightly and murmured, understood, now, don't you want to pick a nickname for your handsome boyfriend? Devon's hidden joy cooled several degrees upon hearing Dash's suggestion, and she quickly responded, yes, I'll call you Dash, and you'll call me Devon, is that okay? Much more romantic than I expected, by the way, now that I've experienced my first kiss, I think I may become somewhat addicted to that feeling, at the moment Dash was about to continue talking nonsense, Devon, who was bandaged, tightened his grip on her hand. Strength to prevent him from continuing to speak. Devon looked at Dash with a bit of embarrassment and pointed out, last time you said not many things would change, what are you doing right now? Things will be even more interesting, but we'll leave that for outside of school. Dash smiled mischievously and just as she was about to continue teasing Devon, the other members began to arrive. Maybe at this moment they are an unexpected couple, but being something so serious taken by both of them, they knew that they would not have those silly problems that couples endured every day. But just when everything seemed to be going perfect, Devon received a call that changed the expression on her face and she responded. Yes dad, Dash can take me so don't worry. Dash cast a concerned glance at Devon, who seemed to lose color, and asked, did something bad happen? My mom is in the hospital Devon tried to digest this as best as she could. Let's go then, get in the car. Without further questioning, Dash rushed to the driver's seat and asked, what's the name of the hospital? Devon tried to remember, and said San Gabriel Hospital. Upon hearing the name of this hospital, Dash couldn't help but close his eyes for a few minutes. After regaining his senses, he stepped on the accelerator. The Mustang's engine roared with power as it headed towards the hospital. It was not the time to dwell on nonsense about his memories of past lives. Devon, beside him, was unmoved due to her concern for her mother. She couldn't help but think of terrible things as they approached the hospital. Your mom will be okay, you don't have to worry Dash took Devon's hand and supported her as much as he could to prevent her from breaking down. Devon squeezed Dash's hand and said, I don't understand much of what's happening, but my dad sounded more serious than usual. I don't think it's something light, otherwise, he wouldn't have called me, just at a moment of happiness, things had turned into a critical situation filled with anxiety about what would happen. Devon's mother was not sick, she was in good health, so it was likely a minor accident. But before reaching the hospital, it was not good to draw conclusions, especially when many things could happen. Dash had spent a long time in a hospital, enough to identify a phone call, and things didn't seem to be well. All he asked, whoever was listening, was that Mrs. Lee wasn't injured. However, knowing that life was cruel, his pleas might not be heard. Upon quickly arriving at the hospital, Dash parked, but before getting out, he said, go ahead first, be careful with the cars. Alright. Devin got out of the car before Dash parked and ran to the elevator door after entering. When she reached the hallway of the room where her mother was, she found her father in the corridor, holding his head and making a call. I need the money as soon as possible, I don't care how much the price is reduced, I need the money as soon as possible. Mr. Zack said before hanging up the call. Devon stopped halfway to her father and asked, what's happening, dad? When Zack heard his daughter's voice, his expression changed. 
He tried to remain calm, but knowing that his daughter was very perceptive, he sighed and said, Your mom declined this morning. Before that, she had a sudden, severe headache, and shortly after, she lost consciousness. Is she okay? Devin sat next to her father, who hid his gaze on the floor. Zack tried to avoid saying it directly, so he pointed, We never noticed, we never noticed anything strange, but your mother the doctors mentioned that she has a brain tumor, and the reports about it are not good, how bad is the tumor? Devin knew little about it, but understood that some were worse than others. It's called a rapidly growing glioblastoma. This tumor is very aggressive because it is destroying your mother's brain, Zack was very distressed, especially because his wife might die. Devin hugged her father, and both began to cry. This situation seemed surreal, as it was sudden, as if it were a joke. When Dash arrived with Devin, he saw her crying with her father, and he didn't know what to do. After a few minutes of silence, he asked, is it that serious? Devin, who was sitting next to Dash, murmured, yes, quite, then we need to transfer her to a better hospital. First of all, we need to inquire about the best treatments for her, and start them as soon as possible. Dash didn't want to stay still, especially when time was of the essence in these situations. Zack, who saw concern on Dash's face, smiled bitterly and said, The recommended treatment exceeds $80,000, not including hospital and medication costs. Transferring her to another hospital is impossible for us. Dash furrowed his brow, took out his bank card, handed it to Devin, and said, Here's a little over $300,000 that I keep as cash. It's my personal money, you can use it for now while I talk to my dad. It wasn't a surprise that Dash's family had a lot of money, but Zack was surprised that he offered his money so quickly. He wanted to refuse, but then Dash said, it's not time to think about it. Money doesn't matter when someone is sick. Devin, who looked at Dash's card, nodded. She took it and said, then we'll accept your money. Don't worry, we'll take care of returning everything once my father starts raising money. You know I don't care about the money. The first thing is to make sure that, with just this, your mother can be okay. Dash set aside empty words, and after giving his bank card to Devin, he left the hospital. He didn't need to know what Devin's mother had, but after leaving the hospital, she began to write to him about what the doctors had diagnosed. Upon learning that it was a malignant brain tumor, Dash furrowed his brow even more. If that's the case, she should be moved for surgery as soon as possible. I hope everything flows smoothly, Dash got into the car and started the engine. He needed to get to his father's company to ask for his help since he could do something. As Dash drove to his father's company, he felt suffocated. The pain of seeing Devin in that state was something he couldn't shake from his mind. While no one would mourn his death, he had believed that having someone care for you was unique and fantastic, but now he was doubting his own principles. This is damn madness, Dash gritted his teeth and drove faster as the seconds ticked away in his mind one by one. By the time he arrived at his father's company, Dash parked wherever he could and entered the building. The guards at the door didn't stop him since they knew who he was, and that continued until Dash reached the top floor. Is my father in his office? Dash asked with a serious expression. The secretary sitting outside Frederick's office looked at Dash and nodded, but before she could stop him, he entered. Dash, who had entered, saw his father on a call, and upon seeing him, Frederick raised his hand to signal him not to speak. Frederick, who was on the call, was a bit puzzled when he saw Dash, but he didn't pay attention to his son. He needed to solve the problems on the calls first, and after that, he would deal with whatever his son needed. Dash, who closed the door, sat in front of his father's desk, tried to calm his nervousness, and after a few minutes of waiting, he was losing patience. It's a pleasure to reach a mutual agreement, my assistant will take care of bringing you the entire contract to be signed as soon as possible. Frederick smiled a bit, and after ending the call, he looked at Dash and asked, what do you want? Dash furrowed his brows and asked, can I visit my father at his workplace? Let's be honest, the only reason you would look for me is that you need something you can't do. It has always been that way for years, so it's not convenient for you to use empty words to address me. Frederick spoke flatly to his son, there were no emotions involved as it had been their relationship forever. Dash sighed, knowing his father was right. So, after taking a deep breath, he said, Devin's mother is sick. From what I heard, she has a fairly malignant brain tumor, and they need help. She could die, dad, so they need our help. Frederick nodded with understanding and asked slightly confused, our help. As far as I understand, what you need is my money, contacts, and support to save your girlfriend's mother. You must understand a bit about life, son. Maybe Devin is important to you now, but many times these things won't keep happening in the future. Frederick adjusted his posture and pointed, and just this time, I will refuse to help you just because you need my help. This is an important lesson you need to learn. Dash stood up from his seat and said in a loud voice, maybe you're right, but does one need to be related to a person to help them? They need our help now more than ever, so the least we should do is help them. Now, a family that is not related to us, we owe them help. Don't be naive, son. If you gave them all your money, and it's still not enough, that means you still don't understand life very well. 
Frederick had chosen this moment to give Dash a lesson, who had recently distanced himself from the family. He needed to make him understand how important it was to be united, so he chose this moment to see his reaction, and he truly wasn't regretting it. For him, his son didn't know how money was spent. He couldn't understand how much $100,000 were, and if he didn't know the difference between that and nothing, then he had neglected his son's education a lot. A brain tumor is something very serious, especially if it grows rapidly. You must understand that she might not survive even if we give them our help. Frederick said, looking at his son with coldness. He wanted his son to understand what he had to learn in his childhood. But Frederick didn't understand the slight distance he had with his parents after getting this new life, and the words of that father, who was much better than before, decayed on various levels. How the hell are you so sure she will die? Dash shouted, hitting his father's desk. This was the first time he had lost control in front of a family member. I never thought I'd see you give up on something, but now I know you're insensitive to this level. He never expected to hear those words from his father. He didn't know what he had done wrong to be treated this way by him, but hearing him say those words couldn't help but put him in the same situation in his past life. Was this how his father reacted when he was bedridden, waiting for death? Did his father always acknowledge him as a nuisance who would eventually die? A hidden anger in Dash came out so strongly that he couldn't control his emotions. He looked at his father with rage and asked, is this how you take people's lives? Maybe that woman doesn't matter to you at all, and you're not obligated to help them, but I won't allow you to talk so easily about death. Since you're not willing to help me, then I want you not to interfere with how I do things. Dash, who turned around, heard his father's voice. And what are you going to do if you're a kid who barely knows about life? Frederick asked in a cold tone. This was the first time he looked at his son in this way, and for some reason, he believed he had made a mistake. Dash, who felt attacked, gritted his teeth, tears spilled from his eyes, and murmured, I may not be a successful businessman, but I know more about life than someone like you, if you're not going to help me, then don't interfere in my life, or I'll disappear from everyone. Dash's words were strong and very clear. Frederick could see his anger inside. You'll have to pay me, the Lee family may have good terms with us, but this is your responsibility. Do what you want, but you'll have to pay me. Get out of this place now. Thank you father, my father will help. I hope for the best in this, I'll visit you, as soon as I change clothes. Do you want me to bring you something? Dash sent this message while sitting in the driver's seat of his car, tightening his grip on his phone after feeling the pain in his body more intensely. I was a fool to think it would be different, Dash muttered as he tried to restore his emotions. He wanted to hit, scream, and cry, all at once, but he couldn't. He had to focus on everything ahead, and first, he had to go home since there was something important he needed to do. My father will be back home for some things, don't worry. Devon's response was simple, revealing the little enthusiasm she had at the moment. Then I'll go home. Dash didn't know if he was rational with his request, but over the past few years, a very strong trust had been forged with his father after opening up a bit. But now, all that trust was shattered. When memories of the past came back stronger than ever, Dash was filled with a fury he couldn't control, and every part of his body now wanted to scream. I was a damn fool, you still the same person who abandoned me years ago, Dash headed towards his house and parked the car directly outside. All the workers were alarmed due to the powerful sound of the Mustang's engine, and when they saw that it was Dash entering, apparently angry, no one said anything. Elena, who was taking care of her children, was surprised. She walked to the door and, seeing her son's expression, asked, what happened, Dash? Nothing that should concern you, focus on your younger children, Dash didn't look at his mother. Just as he was about to continue on his way, Elena, puzzled by her son's rude behavior, stopped him. Stop right now, what has you in this state? Dash turned around, and just as he was about to speak, he saw his brothers approaching, so to avoid a family drama, he shook his head and said, I argued with my father, ask him. Brother. Brother. Dash's two younger brothers approached him, but before they could even greet him, he disappeared from the hallway. Mom, is Dash angry? I think he needs to go to the bathroom. Elena regained composure and smiled charmingly. You're right, your brother had to go to the bathroom. After taking her children to play, Elena picked up the phone and called Frederick, who was currently at the company. A while later, Dash, who hid his room in disarray, found what he was looking for, taking the business card of the man who promised him money in exchange for fights, so he hoped he could make the call. There are only a few people who have this phone number, so if this is wrong, you can hang up now. After hearing that gruff voice, Dash frowned and asked, is this Santiago? It seems you know me. If you're the mother of my children, don't mess with me after paying you, if you're someone else, just say it, damn it. Santiago said, annoyed that his time was being wasted. More than five years ago, you gave me this business card in case I wanted to fight for some money. If the price is reasonable, then I'm interested in doing it. Dash was angry, so the last thing he was doing was reasoning about the consequences. There were a few minutes of silence on the other end of the call, and after thinking for a while, he asked, Are you the demon from the All Valley competition? 
You're still underage, and your father is a hindrance. You don't interest me before reaching adulthood. Dash frowned and said confidently, My father won't interfere, I'll make sure of that. If you're so sure, then come to Japan, Okinawa to be more exact. I'll send you the address of my house, and if you don't show up in a week, don't bother me again. Dash, we saw the call cut off, sighed. Right now, he wanted to prove to his father that he could get the money, and that from then on, he owed him nothing. After more than half an hour, Elena went up to her son's room, and when she opened the door, she was surprised by the mess. She had never been bothered by these things because Dash wasn't like that, and when she saw a suitcase, she asked, where do you think you're going? Dash looked at his mother at the door and said, I want to go to Japan, I'm going to participate in some tournaments where I'll learn to earn money. Elena looked sternly at Dash and said, your father is waiting for you in his office, don't waste his time. Without uttering another word, Dash left his room with the suitcase and walked towards his father's office, who had returned at an unprecedented hour. When Dash entered the room, he saw his father without a jacket, sitting in a chair while sipping a drink of alcohol. Sit down. Frederick's voice was authoritative, this time, he wasn't talking to his son as a father, but as a man. Dash didn't fear his father, he respected him and was grateful for everything he had given him in this and his previous life, but the last thing he would feel for this man is fear. After sitting down, Frederick looked at his son for a few seconds and pointed, You're angry, I understand that perfectly. You must believe that I have abandoned you, that the man you always relied on has left you behind, but let me tell you that you'll thank me for this in the future. Dash was leaning on the chair, looking at his father, who was giving him a lecture he had never had in his past life, but halfway through the speech, he said, Father, I am no one to judge how you raised me from my childhood, since I am very grateful, as you have mentioned now. Thanks to you, I have a very famous kung fu school, and thanks to you, I have an incredible car. But as far as I remember, everything was due to a deal that is being paid off. You gave me the car for my high performance in competitions in school. You've seen my investments and know perfectly the potential it has, so it's not the time for a father-to-son lesson. Dash looked directly at his father while his eyes filled with tears, and he said, Right now, I'm asking you for a favor from son to father. My best friend's mother is sick, and as you say, the possibility of her dying is high. At this moment, Dash paused, the words were stuck in his chest, and after catching his breath, he said, I don't know your childhood, but what I can tell you about death, is that it is the loneliest sensation that exists, and if I can do something to save that woman who matters to me, I will do whatever it takes, do you understand? For the first time, Frederick was left speechless in a conversation with his son. He didn't have much to say, so after Dash calmed down, he said, So, if you have so much confidence in yourself, do what you want. Have you heard me? But everything you owe me will be paid with interest, remember that. I have a long life and many stocks that will grow in several years. I earned that money in tournaments, so you have nothing to blame me for. If I can't pay you now, I will when I can, but before that, I want to go to Japan to participate in tournaments. Japan. Frederick asked very puzzled. Dash nodded and said, You may not know, but there are some tournaments where the monetary gains are significant. I plan to participate and earn money. Do you think with your fists, it's enough to make a fortune? Frederick mocked his son's ignorance. There are famous fighters who earn hundreds of millions of dollars, do you think I can't reach them? If all I have is martial arts, I'll live off it and be the greatest son you have, no matter how you raise my other siblings. You can't deny it, they will never be like me. Dash's cruel words were true in the eyes of Frederick and Elena. None of their other children would be the same as their eldest son, because he grew up in a strict environment while the other two in a peaceful one. For them, Dash would be their most outstanding son, and they hoped he would stay with the company. But despite this, Frederick needed to raise him to be cruel enough, and it seemed he had succeeded. Then go and find my money, if you can't pay me, then never come back. I'll make the arrangements for you to go to Japan, school doesn't matter since I'll report you as sick. Frederick stopped paying attention to Dash's anger, he would take care of him after all, he is his blood. You leave tomorrow morning, after the last family dinner, you can say goodbye to your girlfriend. Frederick dismissed Dash indifferently, and when he left the room, he muttered, You are my greatest pride, son, but this world is cruel, and I hope you understand that. When he murmured these words, he inevitably took out a picture of a yellow cat and sighed, knowing that he, too, hadn't had such an easy life. If Dash doesn't understand this, it means there would be no one to whom he could leave his empire, and everything he had worked for wouldn't be worth it. I hope I'm not wrong. In the conversation with his father, Dash only felt a little sad and angry, but he didn't blame his father. It wasn't his obligation to be charitable to people outside his family, and that was okay. Dash didn't blame him, he didn't reproach anything he had asked him, and he didn't help him as he should have. Now, with a bet, he should earn money and hand it over to his father, since he should be helping his family now. So, is this a promise? Dash looked at his father seriously, the same attitude he had when he first woke up in this healthy body. Of course, don't do something stupid, but learn how to make money. Frederick said, pointing to the door. Go to your brothers, I'll be down in a few minutes. 
Thank you, father. The only thing Dash can do in these cases is lower his head and thank his father's gratitude for helping the Lee family. That's what he can do now, lower his head and thank because, at almost 16, he was still a child. As long as he doesn't turn 18, he couldn't be free on his own, but waiting for that moment was something he wished for to live his life alone. If fate wants it this way, he will earn enough money to pay back everything he owes to his father with interest and distance himself from the family, not in a bad way but for his own mental peace. Staying here much longer might end up making him sick, so he prefers to leave here amicably, rather than having his story tainted with problems. Upon leaving the room, Dash walked to the living room with his suitcase and sat next to his brothers, who, for some reason, loved him a lot. Dash didn't know if he deserved all this, since he was a bit resentful towards his brothers. He envied them because they have always enjoyed a good family, something he couldn't. Why the difference? At this point, Dash wasn't interested in an answer, so waiting for the moment when his father would come down and help him with transportation, he would say goodbye to this place for some time. Frederick remained alone in the room, and after a few minutes, he made a call, prepare things for my son to travel to Japan, don't interfere with what he does as he needs to learn how to make money, and I'm expecting good results from him before making a decision about the rest. We'll take care of it sir. By the way, what are the chances of Mrs. Lee surviving the operation? Frederick asked in a softer tone. She has few, even with the best resources, she could die. It will take a few months to prepare her for the operation. They will bring doctors from China and the Philippines, who are the best in the field, while keeping Mrs. Lee under control. Frederick sighed and said, cover all the expenses. I promised it to my son, so I don't want any kind of problem. Understood, sir. By the time the Hale family gathered for dinner, Dash sat in front of his younger brothers, while Frederick sat across from his wife Alina, who was very nervous. How many tournaments are there in Japan? Dash's expression remained unchanged, but the man next to him who asked this question, made him nervous. Still, Dash didn't change his expression and said, Many, the competitions will be a bit more professional, and I might end up winning with the bets. Can you reconsider? Helena looked at her son and asked. I've already made my decision, mother. As long as you help me with the trip, I won't ask for anything else. Dash was firm with his words. Elena forced a smile and murmured, Actually, your father and I have been considering that you can help him in the company and stay away from martial arts. That's even more impossible. All I have is my body, and this way, I will conquer the world under my own criteria. Dash replied as he quickly ate. Frederick smiled and pointed, The worst that can happen is that you end up with broken bones or in a coma, isn't it? Frederick Hale. Elena raised her voice, something she had never done before. Dash looked at his mother and said, I won't break my bones, I have never been defeated before, and in Japan, I will never be beaten. I told you, I would start questioning whether to continue with martial arts after being defeated. This is your decision, of course, I'll take care of all the medical expenses for the Lee family, so don't worry about anything special. Frederick said as he wiped his lips. Dash nodded and said, I finished my dinner, father, I can't stay to accompany you because I have people to say goodbye to. See you later, maybe Elena and Frederick watched Dash leave this way, but neither did anything to stop him. Do you think it's okay to let him go like this? Frederick frowned and pointed, what they did to us from Requenos is nothing similar to what we did to Dash, he will inherit our wealth, and for that, he must be well prepared. If he can't overcome this, then he's not worthy, and that's it. Dash's car engine raced down the road, and before heading to the hospital, he would take care of bringing food, since he didn't know if Devin and her father had eaten anything. So, he bought something on the way. When he arrived at this hospital where he had once died, he nostalgically looked around and thought about finding the sakura tree planted here. Dash, over here. Devin waved to Dash, who was standing looking into the distance, and approached him, who had come very late. I brought you a lot of things, you can use whatever you need and eat something since it's hot. Dash handed her a bag with drinks and hamburgers, which was the only thing that could be obtained at this hour. Devin had red eyes, so Dodds handed her some black sunglasses and said, if you cry, don't go out in the cold, you could get a nasty eye infection. Now you care about these things. Devon smiled gratefully and murmured this joke while eating the hamburger. Dash moved Devon's hair from the sides and said, I must take care of my girlfriend, I owe taking care of you even more than before, or you'll end up leaving me for someone more attentive. I must be on high alert, don't you think? Devon didn't respond to Dash's sarcasm, she continued eating in silence, feeling better now that she was trying one of her favorite hamburgers. I have something to tell you. At some point, Dash felt that it was the right time, and he said, I found out that there will be tournaments in Japan, I talked to my parents, and they approved my trip to that country to compete and win the cash prizes. Devin took a sip of soda and asked, did they let you go, or did you threaten them? I told them I would leave the house if they didn't let me go if I win those tournaments, I would owe my father any favors, we could cover all the subsequent expenses, and your father wouldn't have to feel pressured by the money he shouldn't. Devin sighed upon hearing Dash's words and said in a sincere tone, I know you don't get along with your parents. 
Asking them to help my family was too much to ask, and I don't agree with you pressuring yourself in this way. You know I'll win those tournaments easily. I just want you to know since I'll be in Japan until New Year's we could call each other every day, send messages at any time, and you just have to take care of yourself here. Dash held Devon's hand, which appeared shattered by the news of her mother's illness. The last thing he wanted was to see her devastated. She was his source of light, and that's why he stayed sane at the moment. His parents were tolerable, but if it weren't for that, the days before he could live on his own would be very bad, or that's what he thought right now. Helping Devon wouldn't cost him anything. She was his best friend until recently, and now that she was his girlfriend, she was someone he had to support in good and bad times. They had been taking care of each other for a long time. Being a couple was just a non-existent bear in their current relationship. Life was tough, and now that he could, he wanted to help Devon. She shouldn't lose a loved one, and it's not pleasant that Mrs. Lee dies. If you leave now, you'll miss a year of school, and you'll also miss the karate tournament you were so excited about. Are you still okay with that? Devon looked into Dash's eyes, seeking what he thought. I don't care. Why go so far? Dash looked into the distance and said, You have a beautiful family, I want this to continue being like that, and I will do everything possible to make it secure. I wouldn't be of any use here, and I'm sure you don't want me to look at you like this, so it's good that I participate in those tournaments. What kind of tournament? Mixed martial arts, fights close to professional ones but more exclusive. The tournament is called Ninja Warrior, and it is a very important one because fighters earn a lot of money. Dash said, making up a story in the process. Devon couldn't say anything, she didn't want to belittle Dash's help, and she knew that most likely there was another bet with her father to help him. Do you promise it won't be something dangerous? I promise, Devon, the fights will be very regulated. Dash said as he nodded. Devon nodded and said, then I'll wait for you, you'll always be on my mind, and I expect constant reports of your fights. Of course, you'll be informed of all the matches. Truth so woven into lies, obviously, Dash was not far from the truth, but with slight changes in his words. He couldn't tell Devon that he would fight for money, nor did he intend to worry her. If his father is now paying the hospital bills, it's because he himself would end up repaying the money. At this point, he wasn't sure if it was because he is his son or if Frederick had become very curious, but in any case, he always ended up helping him. The lessons his father gave him were something he learned at every moment or situation where he needed someone else. This had led him to understand that life is tough, and money is everything, his father had made that very clear, and it made sense. Frederick didn't have the right to help Devon's family, just as Dash didn't have the obligation to do so. In life, things were like that, and only because Dash has a close relationship with the Lee family is he doing all this. After saying goodbye to Devon with a long hug, Dash received his bank card back since his father was taking care of it, and as soon as he finished saying goodbye, he headed to the airport. Some assistance that his parents had put on him would take him to Japan and, in passing, be his intermediaries. They weren't necessary, but Dash didn't want any more problems on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, following international civil aviation rules, we will perform a demonstration on the use of the seatbelt, life jacket, oxygen masks, and the location of emergency exits. It is very important that you pay attention. The seatbelt must remain fastened whenever the seatbelt light is on. It is fastened and unfastened as we are showing you. Dash watched this demonstration, and after traveling many times, the things he needed to know about a flight didn't need to be reminded, so he slept deeply since he hadn't done so. During the trip, Dash had read that in rural villages or underdeveloped areas, fights were much more famous than in metropolitan cities. Here, many people from other countries with a lot of money gathered months before the end of the year to watch real master martial arts fights. In a few months, he would turn 16, Devon would enter high school, and in theory, the closest detour to being able to participate in the national martial arts and karate tournament, and thus represent the country in world competitions. But he was still far from that, the last time he almost lost in a competition in China, and in training, he had been very evenly matched with Cheng, who is a true warrior skilled in martial arts. As for Dri, he maintained strict kung fu teaching from Mr. Han, and together they had made Sakura Bushido a famous kung fu school throughout the country. Japan, Okinawa. In the shadows of Okinawa, heirs of fortunes and political leaders converged to witness clandestine martial arts fights. In this place, the law of the jungle exists, and that means that the largest privately held martial arts tournament is designed for those with more purchasing power to bet on skilled warriors, seeking the next figure to represent them in the selective fights they created. Where martial skill becomes the criterion for choosing the champion. The dark theater of power and skill unfolds in the tropical shadows of Okinawa, and it is precisely to that place where Dash was heading without any fear. As he descended from the plane, Dash breathed fresh air and murmured, Death is certain, when, how, and where, uncertain. Death is always treacherous, it does not say the day or the hour, knowing how death feels, he didn't know when it would come to get him, so he wasn't afraid of many things in life. As long as he trusted his own skills, things that could end his life were small. Now, if anything, all his training was to accomplish whatever he set out to do. 
If my fists will give me the money to pay Mrs. Lee's hospital bills and, in passing, stop owing my father, I am willing to go to the ends of the earth. Dash thought as he walked towards the airport exit. Mr. Hale. Dash Hale. By the time Dash was moving along with his assistant assigned by his father, he could see in the distance an elderly woman holding a sign with the name of the person she was looking for. It seems that's our contact. Said the boy accompanying Dash, helping him with his suitcase. Dash nodded and approached the woman. Is Santiago sending me? Yes, come with me. The streets in rural areas of Japan are often narrow and surrounded by lush vegetation. Exactly where Dash was headed, the area wasn't very developed, so on the way, he could observe traditional houses, farmland, and forests, creating a tranquil and picturesque atmosphere. Urban planning often reflects a harmonious balance with nature, though this wasn't very noticeable on the way to the place where Dash was supposed to meet Santiago. You need to know a few things before meeting with Mr. Santiago. He had left the world of fighting because he didn't have any good fighters to recommend. After receiving your call, he got in touch with foreign partners. I hope you're worth it and won't mess things up more than they already are, the lady said nervously. Dash looked at her coldly and responded, I don't understand why you're more nervous than I am, the fighter. Rest assured, I have the level for this martial arts tournament. At this moment, he wasn't lying. He was at his best, according to Mr. Kim's words. It was because his martial arts were special, giving him the opportunity to fight against any opponent he faced. Age is tied to strength, but not in all cases. Dash understood from his training that strength doesn't necessarily increase with age, but rather endurance. Why does a rich kid want to earn money in fights? The lady looked at Dash with disdain, still not considering him a good fighter. Dash smiled again and said, Ma'am, understand once and for all, my private life must be far from your damn interest, unless it's going to be relevant to this. If you want to know why I'm here, it's to make money and do it with the strength of my body. I knew someone like you, but the difference is that he believed success was surpassing others under any motive, without recognizing that success is overcoming oneself over and over, until you see where you end up, the lady looked at Dash and said, everyone called me Mrs. Yamada. I am responsible for evaluating participants in the private tournament called Hidden Dragons. Many always try to pose as fighters, but you have passed the test. Seeing the fury in your eyes makes me believe that you're here for a reason beyond money. Although you've realized it, you'll probably find the answer later, but make sure to recognize your limits. Mrs. Yamada's words were very peculiar. Her entire observation had been on Dash since he arrived at the airport, and she could sense a certain anguish in his movements. She was good at reading people. She knew that the boy recommended by Santiago was strong, and there was no doubt about that. However, Mrs. Yamada loved to see what else people were looking for in fighting for money. What she saw in Dash surprised her. Besides money, he was looking to release his anger with something deep within himself. Everything that is broken cannot be fixed with pain or blows, it must be removed through meditation and inner peace. But she was just an older woman responsible for evaluating potential participants in the Hidden Dragons tournament. She earned enough to live for a year each time the tournament was held, so she loved doing it. I'm sorry if I was rude, Mrs. Yamada. I'm not here for myself but for someone who means more to me than my own life. I apologize for being immature to mention it, but that person has always been by my side, someone special who now needs my help, and I don't plan on just sitting around. Dash stopped smiling and expressed, when you pretend that only you can do things your way, that's when you decide to walk on a path of knives. Right now, I'm at the entrance, and I don't plan on stopping. Rest assured, even if I'm sad or angry, my mind is clear. I understand that. Well, you remind me of someone, but you seem to have a purpose. Good luck with that. Just remember one thing. Being arrogant is good, but remember that you can only be on top if you back up your words with your strength. Otherwise, you'll be discarded like trash. According to Mrs. Yamada, the Hidden Dragons tournament was not illegal. This tournament was a closed one, maintaining all the security that a martial arts tournament needs. The only difference was that the most powerful people in the world were the owners, and there were no limits to what could happen in that tournament. Money in fights was much higher than in professional ones, but the only requirement was to be selected in the preliminary fights by some important man who would sponsor you during the Hidden Dragons tournament, which almost always happened. That's why standing out was important. What they saw was blood and refined martial arts skills. As long as the age was between 15 and 25, participants could enter without any problem. Knowing this, Dash had to be very careful in the fights, as if he were injured for some reason, his effectiveness would decrease, and he wouldn't be able to ensure continuing in the subsequent fights at 100%. But before even being able to enter the tournament, he had to be someone brutal, achieve the best results, and stand out with his highest martial arts skills. He shouldn't worry about hurting competitors because they wouldn't show him any mercy either. Coming out with broken bones, lost eyes, or bathed in blood was normal. But according to Mrs. Yamada, death had never happened in these types of tournaments. No one died figuratively because if you failed, you were discarded in the preliminaries, and they wouldn't even pay your subsequent medical expenses. 
Understanding this, Dash knew what to do. So, after thanking Mrs. Yamada for the advice, he took out his cell phone and sent a message to Devon, who should be a little affected right now. I'm in Japan. This tournament is not as shady as you imagined. From what I've learned so far, it's private, with guys my age and not older than 28, so I'm within the limits. Devon Lee. Are you 100% sure it's not illegal? Don't trust things easily when you mention Mr. Kim. You're in Japan, and Mr. Kim isn't accompanying you. Be very careful. Don't worry, I'll call you when I have the chance. After sending the last message, the car stopped at what looked like a sushi and ramen restaurant. Mrs. Umada, who turned off the car, said, we're here. You know the idiot Santiago, so you know where to sit. Thanks for the ride and the advice, Mrs. Umada. I'll make good use of everything. Dash bowed a bit and got out of the car. Holy shit, you've grown like the devil. I'm sure I'm not wasting time getting you into the Hidden Dragons tournament. A voice belonging to old Santiago came from the side, observing Dash with admiration for knowing that he had become stronger. Dash, who was observing the people in the restaurant, was startled when he heard a voice beside him. When he turned his head, he saw a man very similar to Colin Farrell, but with a very unkempt appearance. Mr. Santiago, is it really you? Santiago mocked a bit and said, I've lost muscles and aged in five years, how can I not be the same one who chose you before leaving the country? No matter, you and the idiot who hasn't taken his eyes off me, sit down, eat something since you must be hungry. The food on airplane sucks Dash sat down in front of Santiago without any hesitation, and Santiago ordered more food. What's your name? Santiago asked, looking at Dash's assistant seriously. My name is Elliot, sir, alright, Elliot, you'll see and be silent once we're inside. No microphones are allowed, and definitely no cell phones. Stay by my side at all times and do what I tell you, or they'll get rid of you. Those people don't like questioners, nor those who stare at them. Santiago had dealt with those people many times, and it can be said that he has experience. So, knowing how temperamental those who would be observing the private tournament exclusively created for their entertainment could be, the way to treat them is very simple. I understand. I'm here only to be Mr. Hale's interpreter and ensure he doesn't join a tournament where his life is at risk, Elias said, a little nervous about what this tournament really was. Santiago nodded and said, then there won't be a problem, no one will die. Those rich folks just want to see fights between real martial arts masters. Many are Chinese, Filipino, and Japanese. There's the occasional Russian. You're an American, so they'll pay a lot of attention to you, since there's only one man who comes from that country and has a lot of money. I'll be attentive, Mr. Santiago. Now that you mention the details about this tournament, although it isn't what I thought it was, it feels darker than it appears. Dash was totally sincere with his words as he believed it was a darker tournament than it really was. But as if waiting for it, Santiago's next words made it clear. You'll feel bad, they'll treat you as if you were king if you stand out, but you'll be just like a dog in their eyes, you'll witness firsthand how powerful the high society of the world can be. But if you're here with fixed objectives, the rest won't matter, right? Of course not. Dash said much more excited than he was before. Very well, then listen carefully. Santiago looked around and pointed, the Hidden Dragons tournament is a very exclusive one that only organizers of illegal fights worldwide know of its existence. But don't be alarmed, this tournament is not illegal, it's just very bloody. Those millionaires believe that real martial artists are hidden, and that's why they organize these tournaments. Similar to Hulk cuisine, to men of true power, if you tell them you've been preparing a sauce for 100 hours, and end up serving them instant soup broth, they'll believe it. The same happens here, not necessarily all are hidden martial artists. Santiago's gaze evaluated Dash, who was indifferent, and he said, I'll be your representative, and the idiot your parents put to watch you will be my assistant. Neither of you says a word without my consent. How strict is this tournament? Dash, who had thought it was about illegal fights, was surprised. Santiago smiled and said in his raspy voice, Kid, you'll be fighting in front of the most bizarre and powerful people in the world. They'll fill your pockets with money, but they can also erase you from the world if you anger them. Understanding what he meant, Dash nodded and knew that as long as he won the tournament, he shouldn't worry. If he gets a sponsor, the rest doesn't matter. For this reason, he had to mentally prepare himself for the tournament. The preliminaries will start in a week, I registered you as the Dragon Warrior, and your martial arts school as Sakura Bushido. Now remember, you represent a name and a prestigious martial arts school, act like a true warrior, Santiago said while drinking an alcoholic beverage. I understand, sir, Dash responded seriously. Santiago was satisfied with Dash's attitude, so he asked, do you drink or smoke? I don't do any of that. Things that harm the human body are something I try not to consume much, especially tobacco. Damaging my lungs would be a sin. Dash was serious with his answer. The last thing he wanted to do was harm the lungs that had been so crucial in his past life. Then let's get out of this place, let's go to a five-star hotel. Santiago said as he stood up. Is there such a thing? Elliot didn't know that there were such exclusive hotels in this place. They have a hotel for participants. 
My only recommendation is that you don't talk to anyone because everyone there is a rival you'll defeat. Santiago said as he left the restaurant. San Gabriel Hospital Devon had missed classes for the past three consecutive days, solely dedicating herself to accompanying her mother, who had been awake for some time. But knowing the worst that could happen, the last thing she wanted was to be away from her mother's side, just like her father. Daughter, is there something you want to tell me? Zoli wasn't distressed, the last memories she wanted to leave her daughter, if she were to die, were not unpleasant. Devon, who had been silent by her side watching the television, smiled a bit and said, Mother, I have important news to share with you. Dash and I are dating. Hmm, since when? Zoe didn't know how long her little daughter and Dash had been a couple, but both had been acting like one for a long time, so it's not a surprise now. Devon was petrified and said, A few days ago, what do you mean? Well, daughter, we thought you two were a couple for a long time. Come on, you both are more mature than kids your age, so we considered not intervening in your relationship, which seemed very healthy. Zoe said with a charming smile on her pale face. Devon nodded, understanding something, it seemed that everyone knew they were a couple even before they officially were. Not understanding how a couple acted before she became interested in Dash, she realized there wasn't much difference, as Dash had mentioned some time ago. These events seemed to have given the wrong idea to everyone around them, but now that they were officially a couple, she believed there was no need to clarify things. Zola to her daughter and asked with a concerned expression, Daughter, where is Dash right now? I heard from your father that he came a few days ago but didn't come to visit me. Is he still training? No, he Dash wanted to help us. His relationship with his father is peculiar, and they don't usually have open communication. That's why, upon learning about your illness, he decided to travel to Japan to participate in a tournament where the monetary prize is substantial, and he plans to help us with the expenses his family is currently covering. Devon stopped mid-explanation, realizing she had said too much, but now that she knew things were delicate, she didn't think much of it. Dash is a charming guy. Since we met him, we knew his parents gave him a strict education, as if they were drilling him for something. Knowing that his family has a lot of money, and now he has siblings treated like any other little kid, it's not hard to think that Dash was treated differently, as his parents expect to give him everything they have been working for. So, not hiding her thoughts, said, he has always depended on you, and you on him. You've decided to improve together, and that's something that rarely happens in life. I met your father 30 years ago, and since then, we've never been apart. You must understand how special such a relationship is. Devon nodded in understanding. Both she and Dash had never been apart for a long time, and everything had been fine. They knew each other perfectly and never needed to hide anything. They acknowledged their mistakes and exposed things that bothered them, like the mature individuals they were. That's how they had stayed well together, and now that they were more than just friends, it was easy to see that their relationship was much stronger than any normal couple. You have to show him that you care too. When is the All Valley Tournament? You should participate and return to school. There won't be much of a difference whether you stay here at the hospital or not. Zola looked at her daughter with love and said, It would help me a lot if you became the champion again. Many people admire you, and now that Dash may not participate in that tournament, you should at least win the women's division. I have no plans to stay away from you, mother. I don't want to Devon felt bad for a moment, and squeezed her mother's warm hand. Zo smiled and said, Daughter, there won't be any difference, and I don't want to see you depressed in this place. I am strong, I will overcome the operation when the time comes, and we will celebrate together with the championship you will win. You are strong, and you have worked very hard since you were little. Your father's in my dream is to see you as a world champion in the sport you have dedicated so much time to. Caressing her daughter's face, Zo cried in distress and said, Regardless of what happens, remember that this is also your life, and what will happen cannot be avoided even if you are by my side. Seeing you strong and determined will give me more strength to witness that longed-for moment. Devon nodded silently, she hugged her mom in her vulnerable state, and all she could do was cry. Even though she remained strong, she was very worried, she didn't want to lose her mom, and she still believed she wasn't ready to live without her by her side. As the minutes passed, Devon raised her head and said, then stay strong. I will win that tournament and dedicate it to you. All my victories are your victories, mother, so dedicate to me your victory over this little obstacle, okay? Zo smiled and said, of course, daughter. Where do you think you got that winning spirit? Your father is smarter, but my tenacity is what won over that man. So fight and bring that fourth championship home. After talking for a few more minutes, Devon returned home. Although she had Dash's car, she didn't know how to drive, so she took a taxi back, and after a shower, she sat at her desk. But just as she was about to try to sleep, a video call from Dash arrived on her computer and phone simultaneously, so she immediately answered. My dear Devon, how's my wonderful girlfriend? Dash's affectionate voice reassured Devon's anxious heart, so she replied, I'm fine. Has the food not affected you? Dash on the other side of the room shook his head then showed her a black kung fu uniform with a golden sakura tree, and the name Sakura Bushido printed on the arms. Look, they made me a customized uniform. 
They take it seriously, huh? Is it really as impressive as you mentioned? Devin looked at the uniform and was surprised that they had made a custom uniform for Dash so quickly. I told you, the people organizing the tournament are amazing. Since you mentioned the tournament, I will participate in this year's All-Valley tournament and win. Are you sure about that? You don't need to pressure yourself, it's not a major tournament. If we really wanted to win it, we would send the more experienced ones. I am the star of the women's team, I have to win that tournament in your absence. Dash smiled and said, checking dates, I won't be able to participate, but if you do, you will surely take the women's division championship. Show those Cobra Kai boys how incredible you are. I will. The next day, Devin got up to go to classes. This time she was driven by her father, and things seemed very different without Dash by her side. The last time she didn't go to school with him was when Dash had caught a cold. But she wasn't nervous or sad, she had promised her mother, and that's exactly what she would do from now on. As she walked towards the entrance, a voice came from her side, catching her attention. Devon, where is Dash? Miguel, who had investigated some of Dash's fights, was very excited to ask her about some things. Devon turned her head to face him and replied, You won't see him for some time, he's in Japan. Japan? What is he doing in Japan? Miguel asked, very confused because this would imply that Dash would be absent from school for a long time. He went to participate in a tournament, but that's not your concern. Why do you want to know? Devin looked at Miguel with a bit of confusion. Well, I heard he fart in the bathrooms, someone got confused and thought it was me who hit them. It's a huge mess, but it's not to incriminate him or anything, I just wanted to ask him to leave those guys to me, since I'll take care of them. Miguel didn't know how to express his words to Devin because she had a very serious expression. Devin nodded indifferently and said, well, now that you know the answer to your question, that's it. But using your karate to beat up bullies is a very bad idea. It generally creates more trouble, and if Dash fought against people outside of competitions, it's because they cross the limits. Oh, I'll keep that in mind by the way, are those Dash fights on his dojo's page all the most outstanding ones? Miguel had visited the Sakura Bushido page, where he found Dash's matches, so he was very interested. Devin shook her head and said, no, not at all. Those are preliminary fights, we don't upload the finals because that would give too much information to his rivals for upcoming competitions, although it wouldn't help them anyway. After saying those words, Devin walked away from Miguel. Shalice wanted to talk to people. Seeing Devin walk away, Miguel stayed silent for a few seconds, and a voice beside him asked, Do you know anything about Dash? I think he got suspended for a few days, Demetri looked at Eli and said, No one found out about Dash's fight except Miguel. Why would the school suspend him? He's in Japan, his girlfriend told me he's in a competition, but she didn't mention what, although it's obvious Miguel replied, looking at his friends. Eli aside said, watch those fights, that guy is incredible now I'm more interested in joining a dojo. So why not join my master's dojo? If you're interested, it's called Cobra Kai, that's a really amazing place. Miguel presented his dojo very excitedly. Dimitri smiled and said sarcastically, it seems like a good dojo, but looking at you, I can't see the results. Eli nodded at this and said, Sakura Bushido is a good choice, I read their requirements, and they are truly masters because they have numerous championships to their name. Miguel frowned and complained, I've been training for a short time, once I learn more, I'll be a war machine. Whatever you say, let's go to class Japan, Okinawa. In an underground place in the same hotel where Dash was staying, Dash was led along with his manager, Santiago, and his assistant Elliot. They descended to a place where the tournament would take place, and from what they saw, it was a fantastic place with numerous private rooms where people in extravagant suits were present. Look at them, one of them will be your sponsor, and the way to choose is by making an initial bid to have a private auction with them. They'll pick you like candy if you're important, then they'll auction you off now that one of the VIPs takes you as their sponsor. Dash looked at Santiago and asked, what if I only have one sponsor? Everyone will have one if they pass the preliminaries, and if only one is interested in you, obviously, they will directly be your sponsor. Santiago walked towards a registration area to take the list of fights. Welcome, fighters from around the world. You have been selected among the best in your countries with an extensive championship history. It can be said that none of you are nobodies, and all of you are here for a purpose to be the champion of the tournament and become a hidden dragon. An Asian presenter spoke in English, as it was the most common language to date. Therefore, everyone could perfectly understand what the man was saying, including the VIPs who were watching the fighters scattered across the field. Right in this vast space, there are 100 warriors who will fight today to choose the 50 preliminaries. Each of you will fight once, and the winners will be in the official tournament, while the losers will be sent home as expected after a defeat. The presenter made a witty pause, looked in all directions, and shouted, 50 of you will advance to round 32, where you will fight one match a day non-stop, until a winner surpasses the 5 fights they must win to become a finalist in this tournament, and aspire to become the champion. Dash, among the crowd, listened to this entire speech and understood how the preliminary selections would be. 
In short, 50 fighters would be eliminated today from the real tournament. For the tournament, 50 warriors would be divided into sections, and if Dash wanted to win, he would need to defeat 5 opponents to reach the final, which would be the last match. As for the prizes, as he had understood, these would start being given by the VIPs, and in general, each fighter would earn $100,000 per fight, and the winnings would be multiplied by 2. In the end, if the calculations didn't go wrong, he would win a little over $6 million. This was the base prize established by the tournament, not counting the gifts from the VIPs and their companions or third parties. This money was more than enough for Dash. With that, he could buy a house and also pay off all the money he owed to his father without any problem, including the Kung Fu school fees. Yeah, the money is enough to have years of happy vacations. I'll keep 15% of your earnings, not including what the VIPs give you. Santiago looked at Dash and made his offer naturally. Dash looked at Santiago and asked, Do you trust that I'll make it to the final? Damn, kid, you're a really good fighter for you to doubt if you'll reach the final now. I've got your three best fights from the last year, and without counting the more than 70 official matches you've had, you haven't lost in any of them, you remain undefeated in the eyes of the people who accepted you. What about them? Dash asked, looking at the other fighters. Santiago, who had previously investigated the best fighters in this tournament, turned his head and said, they handle karate, taekwondo, boxing, kickboxing, a bit of mixed martial arts, and Muay Thai very few handle kung fu in particular, so for that reason, you have an advantage. Of course, Dash was 15 years old and very close to turning 16. In the eyes of many, he was very young and couldn't be compared to other fighters, but many did pay attention to him. Just crush them mercilessly, there are no rules although the selection is very different from before, there is only one rule, and that is to knock out your opponent. Santiago smiled a bit and said, no matter what, even if someone dies, you would know, but it's frowned upon to kill someone in a match for the VIPs, unless you get a crazy sponsor. Dash nodded and said, I'll keep that in mind. Do you know who my opponent is in the preliminaries? Santiago checked the sheet he had been given and said, You'll fight in round 4, and your opponent will be Salem Somchai, a 19-year-old Thai who handles mixed martial arts very well, but it won't be a problem, right? None at all, I'll take care of it in a minute. Dash was confident in his abilities because he had never fought to cause harm, only to score points. His current kung fu skills were focused on damaging the vital points of enemies, and taking them out of the fight. Not to mention that over the past few years, he had been hardening his knuckles, knee bones, and preparing his body to withstand really strong blows. Today, he was good at martial arts. He still needed years to be considered one of the best, and he might need to defeat really powerful opponents, but he was not weak, and he was sure that no one of his age could defeat him. He had trained brutally for over 5 years, something none of his age could do unless forced. He trained with an unmatched passion because that was his greatest desire. To breathe, feel the air, and be strong are my greatest passions, Dash thought while waiting on the side and watching the matches that had begun to take place. The tournament was private but recorded, and according to Santoyo, many watched it through the dark networks. However, unlike here, the faces were censored, and everything about the competition was strictly secret. With 50 matches, there were 3 matches taking place simultaneously, and all were recorded. Many VIPs brought their assistants to find out for them who the most outstanding fighters were, hoping to find a good fighter to bid on in the auction. In a VIP room, a group of magnates watched the matches, and one in particular asked, why are there more young people this time? Don't be too indifferent to the participants, each of them is the best in their locality, and could break the legs of our bodyguards. Young people are chosen because they are more resistant, and their fights are longer also, it's not like the elders would fight in a tournament like this, if they've reached that age, they wouldn't need the money. A man with a horse mask responded coldly. Well, I hope to find a good fighter to crush that idiot Carpio. He should be very passionate about finding a good fighter now. It's your fighter's turn, good luck. An administrator approached where Santiago was sitting and informed him about the upcoming fight. Santiago nodded and said, All right, kid, show me that brutality you've been hiding since you were a child, and maybe both of us can get what we want. Facing the gaze of many competitors who were by his side, Dash shook his head and said, There won't be any problem, I'll take care of it in a striking way. Remember, never celebrate too early. Some fighters use drugs, simple punches may not be effective against those types of fighters. As he walked towards arena number 2 of the 3 active ones being prepared, the roars of the crowd felt uncomfortable. Dash looked at his opponent, who wore shorts similar to boxing but no shirt. Compared to his own kung fu uniform, Dash was much more eye-catching. There's no way a kung fu fighter can stand out in special competitions simply because many haven't seen them fight, and it is for that simple reason that many are unaware of their skills. Salem Somchai looked at Dash and smiled while clenching his fists. The referee, who was only there to ensure that neither of the two died, waited for the order to start the fight. I thought only the Chinese learned that kung fu stuff, are you from some mountain? Salem Somchai coldly mocked Dash's attire while hopping lightly on the ground. 
After hearing those words, Dash sighed quietly, letting go of those inconvenient insults. Taunts, insults, or disdain didn't affect him at all. Everything would be resolved in a fight, so there was nothing to disturb his mind. Do you really think you'll walk away from this fight? The referee, who had received the signal, stepped forward and said, The fight doesn't end until one of you surrenders. The fight won't end until one of you is unconscious or can't continue with the match. Blood doesn't matter, injuries don't matter, the only thing that matters is winning. Dash smiled as he raised the palms of his hands in a standard quite basic but aggressive fighting position. At this moment, although there were fighters from different martial arts, few Chinese fighters had passed the preliminaries. Seeing one who practiced Kung Fu caught the attention of many who had not faced fighters using these martial arts. The other contestants in the arena who had already fought and won, watched Dash's fight with great interest. Under the attentive gaze of the crowd, Salem Somchai felt elated to be able to hit Dash, and possibly get a good sponsor who could bet on him. Dash understood the thoughts of that boy, obviously, everyone is here for more than just money, but he was a bit different in this respect. Besides money, what he wanted to know was how far his current limit was. It had been a long time since he got injured, so right now, he wanted to fight without holding back. Looking at Salem Somchai, he knew that this was a perfect example to start with. Both sides to your positions, let's begin in 10 seconds. After giving the green light for the fight, the referee extended his hands to both corners, so that the two fighters had no advantage. As the referee's words dissipated, Salem Somchai's facial expression instantly turned brutal. Raising his fists, he looked threateningly at Dash, who stood staring at him. Mixed martial arts have gained much fame in recent times, leaving behind karate, which doesn't have much disadvantage, but many have forgotten that kung fu is even more complex now. However, just as some people who were paying attention to Salem Somchai's incredible physique, all turned their attention to Dash, who had not been intimidated despite his age limit to enter this type of fight. Ready? Fight. Slap. As soon as the fight started, Dash opened the combat with a high kick that was blocked by Salem Somchai's arm. But at that very moment, Dash regained his distance with a left kick that effectively hit his approaching opponent's left shoulder. Taking the distance again to maintain control of the fight, Dash knew perfectly well that mixed martial arts encompass both punches, kicks, grabs, and strangulation. Therefore, he must not allow himself to be taken down, even though he handles jujitsu very well. When he saw that Salem Somchai was rushing towards him quickly, Dash knew that this fighter's intention was to dominate the fight on the ground, and that was not convenient. While facing Dash's first reaction, Salem Somchai's expression also became serious. Therefore, he immediately changed his fighting style to a close one, and after recovering, he moved forward. But, Knowing what to do, Dash stretched out his hands and began to attack with aggressive blows to his opponent's nerves without any mercy. Squeezing his hands tightly, each of Dash's blows was like hammers impacting Salem Somchai's flesh, and he immediately began to feel pain and numbness. In a quick exchange of blows, Dash managed to graze the opponent, who, seeing that his vision was turning red, began to step back while touching his forehead that had started bleeding. You can surrender now, if I hit that area again, your eye will be in danger, Dash said as he wiped away the blood that had splattered on him. Salem Somchai felt humiliated, he knew that now, injured, the chances of moving forward in this tournament had decreased. So, from this point on, he would do everything possible to not let Dash go unscathed. Slap. Slap. At that moment, Salem Somchai's kicks headed towards Dash like a whip, and powerful blows resounded throughout the arena. The two exchanged more blows at an increasingly faster pace, but everyone could see that Dash was slowly finishing off his opponent. Santiago, who was watching closely from a distance, grinned sinisterly when he saw that everyone had focused on Dash's fight and murmured, We got them, it's time for you to finish the fight. In a fight, winning is crucial, and that's something everyone has in mind. However, the organizers of this tournament are not interested in quick matches, as frequent fast-paced bouts can become boring for them. That's what Dash had in mind during his first fight, which is why he was putting on a good show. Thud. Thud. While his palms clashed with Salem Somchai's kicks, Salem exaggerated his movements, making them more dramatic than they should be. Under the watchful eyes of the crowd, the two figures in the arena, now the only ones still fighting, continued to exchange brutal blows as they moved. The blood on Salem Somchai's face added excitement to the fight, as everyone knew this fighter was about to lose, but still wanted to see how it would happen. Thinking that a 15-year-old kid can fight at that level, while others focused on the fight, in a VIP room, a man named Jack Duquesne received Dash Hill's data, which immediately stood out in the fourth round. About a hundred official fights, and he's won them all, fighting since he was 11, showcasing his high combat ability. On second thought, this could be the fighter to bet on Jack led to the tablet with the data and shook his head. He's too young. Is there anything specific he's fighting for? Besides money. Jack furrowed his brow and asked, Who among those fighting here isn't fighting for money, you damn piece of shit. The nervous assistant adjusted his voice and said, Apart from money, he's fighting here to find out if someone can defeat him. Is that recorded? 
Jack raised an eyebrow, quite intrigued by Dash, who, though not in his focus, was attractive enough for a bed in the auction, and to take under his wing. He's toying with Salem Somchai, that fight should have ended minutes ago thud. 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 As Dash moved around the arena, Salem Somchai's expression darkened. He had never expected his first opponent to be someone so young and extremely strong. What was even more terrifying was that now he couldn't feel the sensation of his limbs as Dash attacked. It's just luck, it must be. This discovery made Salem Somchai fearful. Now, he couldn't win this fight using his martial arts, so he took a sudden step forward. His body was about to make contact with Dash's to take him down. However, at that moment, Dash's palms changed from open to close. This is the end Dash, who had perfectly read Salem Somchai's intentions, struck his stomach forcefully and, with a quick takedown, struck his forehead forcefully. Winner. The referee, who saw Salem Somchai, stepped forward and separated Dash from him. It was well known that adrenaline turned people into monsters who couldn't stop once a fight began, so he had to intervene. But at this moment, Dash was different because he wasn't agitated. His gaze was clear, and after seeing his opponent lying on the ground, he returned to Santiago. That was fabulous, you tore him apart. Santiago, who was jotting down details in his small notebook, congratulated Dash and then asked, did you get hurt? Dash shook his head and said, avoided injuries, but the hits will leave me a bit sore. Is there time between fights? You have a day for recovery, not much, but it'll be enough for the next fight. As the fights become fewer, the privileges increase. Each sponsor will be interested in having their fighter in the best condition. That's why they will be given time. What Dash discovered is that if someone interesting notices his skills, he didn't exactly know how it worked, but with a good sponsor, he would gain more incredible things. Watching the last fights, Dash couldn't say much about this because there were so many that, in the end, he got bored. He didn't know if his purpose, besides making money, was still real, but he did want to know if there would be a defeat for him here. It wasn't a matter of doubt, but as he grew stronger, the chances of losing diminished. He couldn't go all out in the all-valley fights. National tournaments weren't in his field of vision yet, so only foreign tournaments remained, and every time he had one, he had to bother his parents. He still didn't have the privilege of traveling alone due to his age, but that would change when he turned 17, and it was only a matter of time. As the last fights concluded, the losers left with a few dollars, while the winners were taken to the VIP rooms. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, out of a hundred fighters today, everyone has enjoyed 50 matches. As is customary in a hidden dragon tournament, it's time for each of you to choose the fighters who will represent you in your bets. Gaku Kane, a global business tycoon in the oil industry, entered a luxurious auction room where many of his peers in this spectacle were already waiting. About time you showed up Jack. I was getting tired of waiting for you. Carpio, Jack's major rival in this competition, had been taunting him for a long time since he won a bet of over a billion dollars last year. Gaku Kane smiled modestly, but inside, he was furious at that disgusting idiot. Still, maintaining composure, he said, I was enjoying what this place has to offer. That's why I come here before the year ends. Do you have your fighters? Carpio looked at Jack and raised his eyebrows, seeking an answer in his expression. I do Jack Duquesne sat down next to his assistant and looked forward. As the room filled with over a hundred potential bidders in the auction, the auctioneer raised his hands and said, everyone knows the rules. There are 50 fighters available for you to choose from, and it will only be their figure in this tournament, provided you bid a considerable sum for them. In this auction, VIPs bought only the image of the fighter, knowing only their history, watching their live fight, and having a good chance they will go far. Some take it more seriously than others, like Carpio or Jack, who have an unhealthy rivalry confined to this place. Others simply choose a fighter based on their appearance, size, muscles, or martial arts skills, and that's it. That's why as long as someone has enough money to win a fighter, that would be more than enough to have fun. The auctioneer pointed to a huge screen in front and said, First classified fighter, his name is Khaled Al Farsi, who defeated his opponent in less than a minute. Khaled, an expert in Muay Thai from a young age, has won numerous regional championships. His aggressiveness and precision in knees and elbows have secured him a prominent career with an 80% victory rate in the last five years. We'll start at $100,000 in increments of 50,000, 150,000, 200,000, 350,000. Bids started rising more and more dramatically. Many were not patient with the wide selection available, so they immediately pounced like lions. Gakku Kane looked at all this drama and shook his head. The way many rushed to bid high amounts of money for fighters who weren't worth it in his eyes was ridiculous. Do you already know which of the two selected fighters you're interested in? Let's go for Dash Halo Wei Chen, both handle their kung fu very well, so either of them will be perfect for bidding on them Jack Duquesne had made his choice based on his own preferences. Dash is only 15, do you think he's a priority over more interesting fighters? Jack Duquesne shook his head and said, do as I say and keep quiet, having seen Dash's martial arts, Jack knew that he was just playing and most likely holding back. 
For him to have easily defeated an opponent 4 years older, his performance in that art must be very high. Next fighter Rafael Martinez. 350,000. 550,000. For people with money, this was a mere act of charity, as each sponsor would provide exactly that additional money to the prizes offered by this tournament. The real bets were made by the VIPs, they were the most interested in betting on any kind of nonsense, just to have more excitement. There were good fighters, at least 10 who were extremely brutal in combat, but for Jack, they weren't on his list of choices. He has seen Dash's eyes and was truly captivated. He knew perfectly well that this kid was a true demon, and wouldn't stop fighting until he couldn't move. That's why he wanted him. This simple choice was primitive, not based on statistics and comparisons. His eyes were his most sacred evaluation, so for that reason, he would be guided by them. Next fighter, 15-year-old Dash Hale. The image of Dash's last fight was displayed on the screen, catching the interest of many. Dash, known in China as the Dragon Warrior, winner of numerous international tournaments, has demonstrated a profound knowledge of Kung Fu. He is one of the stars of the Kung Fu school called Sakura Bushido, and currently undefeated in official matches. Jack UK nodded, and at that moment, his assistant said, We offer 500,000. 700,000. Carpio looked at Jack's indifferent expression, and threw out a number just to annoy him. 1,500,000. 3 million. Jack UK looked away and said, Come on, Carpio, I don't plan on leaving all my money in this insignificant auction, when the real business is in the competition of our choices. Do you really want that boy? Throughout the room, the only ones who couldn't stand each other and made it public were Jack and Carpio. They openly displayed their mutual dislike every time they exchanged words. Carpio heard Jack's question, smiled modestly, and said, Are you really offering such a small amount for a fighter I personally chosen? 10 million. This number wasn't enormous, but it set a record for one of the highest bids so far, and that was considering there were even better fighters according to many standards. Jack Ukane didn't want to appear desperate, but if the sum exceeded 50 million dollars, he knew he wouldn't bid anymore. At least he would leave it to someone interesting in his eyes, but not Carpio, that could never happen. 15 million. Sir, I would advise going for Wei Chen as our next target, since Carpio would be out with his bid. Do you want me to lose face against that idiot? Jack made his final bid and said, 30 million. This time, everyone stayed silent. Many of them might have sums of several billion dollars, but offering that amount of money to a fighter they knew little about, even if he wins the tournament, is an exaggeration. The chances of a fighter winning are low, as it involves continuous fights in a span of no more than a month, and everyone understood that. It didn't matter if you had the best fighter, if he got injured in the first fight, he could be defeated by someone with less profound skills. But now that Jack had offered that amount of money, no one else wanted to get involved. They knew perfectly well the consequences of doing so, and preferred to be spectators of the tournament in peace. Even Carpio smiled at how easy it was to anger Jack and stop bidding. He feared becoming the sponsor of someone like Dash and, as a result, losing his chance to win this tournament in bets against other VIPs, as that would be boring. The sponsors chose their fighters, many of whom surpassed 10 million dollars, but it wasn't comparable to Jack's offer, from which no one wanted to interfere. Remember, gentlemen, now that you have your fighters, it's time to be good partners and take care of them as much as you can. If any of the fighters win, as sponsors, you have every right to pay them the offered sum, and you will keep the rest offered by other fighters as a reward. After saying that, the auctioneer bowed and quickly left the auction. Jack Ukane didn't want to stay here either, so he also left the auditorium and spoke with his assistant about not meeting Dash until he won another battle. In a hotel room, Dash was checking some of the marks his previous opponent left on his skin. Nothing serious Dash murmured, a bit more relaxed knowing he was in perfect condition to continue the tournament tomorrow. Santiago entered followed by several people, and said in an anxious tone, Kid, they will check you and take care of all your assistants for the fights from now on. What do you mean? Dash looked at all these people and frowned. Was it everything given to him in this place supposed to be attributed to success in the fights? Santiago smiled and said, This is a gift from your sponsor. They will take care of giving you the best information about your opponents, nutrition planning, and the fastest recovery processes for each fight. Do you know who chose me? Dash's eyes widened after knowing that someone had taken an interest in him. The young woman smiled modestly and said, The hard part is not getting a good sponsor, but having the right people with you. Dash nodded and said, then I'll be in your care. When can I meet my sponsor? He will call you, you just need to put on a good show for that. Santiago was crying with happiness, since none of his fighters had previously reached the gates of a tournament of this scale. So I guess that's it. Is there any protocol I should follow? Dash was blank about this tournament, and everything he did was what Santiago knew. A man with glasses approached and said, all you have to do is follow your diet, recovery process, and be in perfect condition for the fights, which will be at noon. Dash nodded with his gaze, and after a few more things, everyone left. 
According to what he had to consider, it was the injuries because these could be present without realizing it, so he would be under review after each fight. Surprise? Santiago asked, looking at the silent dash. I thought it would be like the illegal fights in movies. This is even more sophisticated and luxurious than any tournament I've participated in. Santiago nodded and said, that's understandable, but I didn't put you in just any competition, but a very exclusive one, so you should be grateful. You know we both benefit. I'll win this tournament, and then there will be nothing to be thankful for, need help with anything. Santiago saw Dash warming up and asked as he approached with a tray of food. Dash shook his head and said, I won't need it, but I want you to take care of analyzing the strongest opponents. In normal situations, he didn't like analyzing his opponents as it made the fights more interesting. However, now he was not only fighting for himself but also for Devin's mother, his sponsor, and to earn a good sum of money. Many might prioritize this, but Dash didn't want to miss any details about his enemies, making him more comfortable in the fights. Don't worry, we have people from your sponsor analyzing all your opponent's moments before, and we know exactly how to act. Also, we'll give you a proper list of the strongest opponents you might face. Santiago said as he looked around. At this moment, there were 25 fights scheduled for today, with 50 fighters scattered all over the place, training. Many were excited to continue competing, knowing that each victory could earn them hundreds of thousands of dollars. For normal fighters, this money is an impressive amount, but if you think about it, that amount isn't much considering what it takes to fight here. Do you know my chances for my next fight? Dash asked, looking at Santiago, who was currently checking the schedule for today to know when their fight was. As you only fight once every three days to improve the fighter's performance and give them room to rest, it doesn't matter much if you fight now or later, Dash looked at Santiago but insisted, I need to prepare mentally. Have you ever fought in your life? If you're an organizer of illegal fights, you must know something about this kid, I'm not a damn fighter. In school, even the first year kids kicked my ass, but then weapons started circulating, and the story changed. When you bring a gun to a fight, you can beat any martial artist. In the face of these words, Dash didn't have much to say. Bullets were indeed more effective than any punch, and getting a gun wasn't complicated at all depending on the country. It seems like it's about to begin. Upon hearing Santiago's words, Dash lifted his gaze and then noticed the arena, which was a high stone platform that wasn't there yesterday. Competitors from around the world all have been gathered here for a purpose, and that is to become this year's hidden dragon. Are you ready for the glory that entails? The presenter was making an excellent opening, but many didn't care about this. All have obtained a sponsor, some have had the right to talk to them, while others still need to earn their trust. Remember, each fight will give you several hundred thousand dollars, and that will be increased as the competition progresses. Dash looked at this whole scene under his own judgment, and felt like he was in a movie. Everything seemed so unreal because many things didn't make sense in this place. But his only job was to win as much as he could here to return home and focus only on his own public championships. Winning here, besides recognition and money, wouldn't bring him anything else. Therefore, once he wins this tournament, he will go back home and share the glory with Devin. You don't think you've won this tournament already, right? Santiago looked at Dash's confidence in his eyes and asked just to be sure. I don't know what kind of motivation you take in a fight, but in each of them, I know I'll win the match. Dash looked at Santiago and shook his head. Dash had never been defeated, but that didn't mean he always came out as the winner. For example, in his many confrontations with Cheng, he had lost a few, and with three as well. They were freaks, so he had to be very careful when facing them. It's true that in real competitions, he was undefeated, but these weren't two very separate things. In this tournament, everything is valid, the only role is to have the forgiveness of life. Welcome to this tournament, and may the most skilled warrior win. When the tournament opened, the fights began, and truly, all the warriors in this place were extremely skilled. Perhaps this would help Dash get closer to the final, as many powerful rivals would face each other in a way. Dash Hale vs. Takashi Yamamoto when they announced his name, Dash closed his eyes for a moment before stepping forward and facing his opponent, who seemed ready for the showdown. Dash looked at his opponent this time, and from his eyes, he didn't seem very impressive. However, according to the information he had been given, he handled karate very well, so he was interested in seeing how far he could go. Ready? Fight. This time there were two mats where two fights were taking place simultaneously, and according to Santiago, as the fights decreased, they would become individual until each fight became the center of attention. Moving quickly towards Takashi, who had raised his guard, Dash launched a rapid attack of punches that overwhelmed his opponent's defenses for a few seconds. Takashi's face sank as his expression darkened, quickly stepping back as Dash advanced with his fierce blows. Moments later, it was Takashi's turn to attack. Boom. 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 In the arena, the exchange of punches and slaps intensified into a competition of who could endure the blows better. Only after a few minutes of fighting did the difference in endurance show. Smack. 
Dash, it had trained his body to a level uncommon for someone her age, seized the advantage and increased his speed as much as he could. With increased speed, he launched a straight kick that made Takashi step back. Taking advantage of this, Dash jumped forward and with an elbow, opened a gash on Takashi's forehead that began to bleed excessively moments later. But just when Dash thought he had won the fight easily, Takashi stabilized herself, firmly planting her feet on the ground. Incredible Dash, reacting, stepped back while reassessing his opponent, who until now seemed to have been defeated. Takashi wiped the blood from his forehead as he spat blood. His gaze was like that of a dying wolf, as his eyes pierced Dash like arrows. Raising his right hand, the 15 fingers closed tightly as he made a rigid retraction movement. In that motion, Dash could feel that if hit by something like that, he would lose control of the fight. Do you think you're Bruce Lee? Dash thought while looking at Takashi, who was waiting for his to move. Takashi's complexion was slightly pale as he glared at Dash with anger. The fury of losing can do a lot of harm to people, and right now, that sensation is what everyone feels when fighting. But Dash was in no hurry to advance, the favorable conditions he was in now were unparalleled, so moving now would be really foolish. You coward. Takashi snapped, seeing that Dash had not advanced. At that moment, Takashi changed his fighting stance and lunged at Dash, who maintained a rigid kung fu defense, giving his the opportunity to counter any attack. Boom. The first punch was stronger than before, Dash indeed had trouble receiving that blow, so after feeling that the blows could cause his serious damage, he slowly retreated. Everyone could see how Dash was slowly losing ground, some believed that Takashi had actually turned the fight around, but not everyone noticed something in Dash's movements, as he retreated slowly while dodging. His footwork the way he attacks, how he breathes, and when he stops. Dash's eyes had completely read his opponent, and in just a few seconds, he understood what he had to do. Dash, who dodged a punch from Takashi, leaned her body forward well below that attack and with an elbow, struck her opponent's ribs hard. Crack. The blow was unmeasured, so Dash couldn't know for sure if he had broken any of Takashi's ribs, but what he did know for sure, is that the blow hit hard and decisively. In the end, Sensei can't do it. As the audience's gaze turned to the arena, everyone could see Takashi's figure falling to the ground. But before he could even touch the ground, Dash half turned and without anyone realizing that he had won the fight even if he had stopped, kicked Takashi in the head, who, upon receiving it, fell to the ground unconscious. Winner, Dash Hill. Looking at his fallen opponent, Dash slowly retreated as the medics quickly took Takashi away, who seemed to be only unconscious. That was amazing. That kid is incredible. As long as there was blood, flashy moves, and interesting fights, there was no need for anything else to impress the audience. So after seeing that there was a winner, the VIP members began to celebrate. For some reason, as Dash returned with Santiago, he felt that these fights didn't feel the same way. All that blood gave is a certain sense of coldness, he didn't want it to be this way, but everyone in this place needed something, and he is no exception to this. I'll be back soon, Dash thought as he wiped the blood on his knuckles. Now, do you think that kid isn't impressive? Jack looked at the people around him who had lost their fighters and smiled coldly. Once everything is over, call my fighter. I want to meet him. Understood, sir. Put your knuckles on ice, it will reduce the pain, and the swelling won't be too exaggerated, said a nurse as he examined Dash's red knuckles, affected by direct blows. Although the style he practiced focused on open-handed strikes, he usually used kicks on easy opponents, allowing his to concentrate on reducing damage to his defense. The other fights were not interesting for Dash, the only ones he focused on were the ones where his opponent would come out tomorrow, and he could say with certainty that this would be a tough fight. His next opponent's name is Alejandro Lopez, who knows Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and is very skilled at executing it in fights. From what he had heard from the people who provided information, things would not be simple. Lopez, a skilled warrior in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, has dominated fights by submitting his opponents. With a strategic approach, he has maintained a solid 95% victory rate over the past 5 years, even though he usually comes out much more injured than he should in his fights. That kid won't be a problem, just stay away from his takedowns, and you could easily win, Santiago was not worried at all about the next opponent they had to beat. As they walked away from the arena, Dash thought that his focus on the fight was right, but he still felt a bit distant from this type of competition. He had always fought for herself, but now, having a responsibility opened up a much larger space in his chest than he had ever felt before. But just as they were about to head to their room to pass the time in other ways, a woman in a black suit approached and informed, Mr. Hale, your sponsor has requested to see you. Santiago, who was Dash's voice in negotiations, said, It's about time, the moment has come to meet the source of our opportunities. They were soon led to a very luxurious room, with wines and liquors everywhere, something that Dash ignored as he had been focused only on the fight since arriving in Japan. Tap tap. Tap tap. At that moment, footsteps were heard in the distance, and soon a man in his 40s, in excellent physical shape, approached, smiling from ear to ear. 
I never thought I'd see you, but after watching the last fight, you've awakened in me the need to exchange words with you. Jack Duquesne looked at Dash as soon as he entered the room and shook her hand. You are Santiago, who was ignored, looked at the man with a bit of nervousness. Jack smiled and nodded, I am the sponsor who chose you. I really wanted to choose a guy with more age, but your look caught my attention a lot. Now tell me, why are you here? Dash remained silent for a moment, and after thinking of a response, he said, Since I was a child, I wondered how far I could go in contact competitions. For this reason, I started training, but the main reason I am here is for the money. There was no reason to lie, he was here for money and that foolish bet he made with his father. At that moment, he was angry, he wanted to escape and scream in frustration, but after that feeling slowly faded away. If he is here now, it's because he made a promise. C didn't think it would be easy to make money, but now that he's in the right place, he would obviously take advantage of this opportunity. Well this doesn't feel right, money has no feelings and would only last for a while. Your father has a lot of money, why do you need money? Jack uncorked a bottle of wine and poured himself a glass. Ash smiled slightly and said, I need money, and I wanted to show my father that I can make money with the only thing I know how to do. You have a curious relationship with your father. He has a good method, but I still believe that the reason you're here is not just for the money. Jack smiled, staring fixedly at Ash, who seemed perplexed. The money your father would eventually give it to you, you're here because you feel stifled Dash frowned, he didn't understand a single word of what Jack was saying, and necessarily didn't want to understand. He had ended up hating people who liked to speak in riddles when they had the answer right in their hands. This tournament is private, but it has everything an official tournament could enjoy, so you are not in danger. What you did is foolish, but since you're here, enjoy the journey and fight until you are defeated. After seeing Dash in person, Jack wasn't very interested in talking to his anymore, what he saw certainly disappointed him a bit. I have to thank you especially for choosing me to be my sponsor. Fights have always fascinated me, and I will continue until I am defeated. Dash didn't have many words to exchange with that strange man, now what he wanted to do was make some calls and clear his mind. When Dash left, Jack smiled slightly and said, Your son is indeed a madman, Frederick, although you're getting him to inherit all your wealth in a peculiar way. Jack had investigated Dash and was surprised by his age. He researched his family background and found out he was the son of a good acquaintance. Families with power have a peculiar way of training their descendants, they needed someone capable enough to defend the family fortune, and it is understandable that one of the children takes on that role. Let's see how strong your son is, I'll take care of him and see if he can win this tournament, I made it to the quarterfinals. How's Devin's mom? Dash answered a call from his father and responded now with a normal tone in her voice. To be honest, he didn't hate his father, he understood him perfectly, but he still wanted to move forward and try to see how far he could go. Frederick on the other side of the call knew exactly where his son was, so knowing that the whole place was normal, and that he was not being restricted by anyone, he stopped worrying and said, Once you finish that tournament, come back as soon as possible. You should know that the chances of success for Mrs. Lee are not very high. I understand, I'll be in touch. Dash hung up the call after saying that, and feeling an incredible pressure in his legs, he decided to go for a walk. Where are you going? Santiago looked at Dash leaving and asked out of sheer curiosity. I need some fresh air is that dojo on this mountain. Having some free time to explore different places in the area, Dash had decided to find a place to clear his mind, which had been filled with very distressing thoughts. When he realized that Mrs. Lee has very few chances of overcoming that operation despite the great doctors attending to his, Dash realized that life is sometimes absurd. He was happy to live and wanted to continue doing so, but when he knows that people he loves and holds in high esteem feel terribly bad, there is no punch that can avoid those feelings, no technique or training that can drown out his emotions. Dash, is there really a need to climb all the way up that mountain, just to visit a dojo right before an important fight? Elliot, who had accompanied Dash, complained after learning that they might have to climb those stairs. Don't be dramatic, if we go up now, it will get dark, and we'll be back by nightfall. Dash shifted his gaze away from the ascending stairs, and just as he was about to withdraw, a voice was heard in the distance. How dare you come back? Sensei, please forgive me. You know perfectly well that I denied you participating in that tournament. Have you looked at your face? Tell me, what will your family think when they find out you've been beaten in that way? Approaching the source of the argument in Japanese, Dash was surprised because the person he saw was none other than Takashi, whom he had defeated a few days ago. Go back home, make sure to heal your wounds, and reflect on your mistakes, can I go back to Miyagi-do? The old man looked intimidatingly at one of his many students and said, Go back now, don't come back until you're ready to admit your mistakes. Dash looked at the old man and murmured, Miyagi-do. That name was by no means a mystery, Dash remembers perfectly that they are in Okinawa, and that Miyagi-do is the dojo representing Mr. Miyagi, so hearing that name particularly in Japan and also in this place, is more than a coincidence. Do you teach karate in Miyagi-do? 
Dash looked at the old man in front of him and pointed. My name is Dash Hale. I had the opportunity to learn a bit about Mr. Miyagi's karate in a tournament. The old man, who had calmed down after seeing Takashi safe and sound, averted his gaze, looked Ash up and down, and seeing those wounds, it was obvious that he was also involved in the tournament being held here. Whose karate have you seen from Mr. Miyagi? Daniel Arusso the old man fell silent for a few seconds and nodded afterward, walked toward Dash, and said, My name is Chosen Taguchi tell me, what are you doing so far from home? So it's you Dash thought a little surprised to have met Chosen Taguchi, after investigating a lot about dojos in Okinawa. He didn't know exactly if he had a chance to meet this man, but now that he had, he was surprised. There is no doubt that with the opening of Cobra Kai, many things would change, at least around Daniel LaRusso's life, but he didn't think the change would be so radical many years later. You seem to be a good guy, so you shouldn't be getting into trouble. Are you coming from far away to participate in that tournament? Chosen changed his question upon hearing Dash's silence, which seemed to be in a trance. I heard about that tournament just by chance, and after sending my application, I was accepted. It's not a place like I had in mind, so it's suitable for finding strong opponents. Chosen nodded calmly and said, I can see confusion in your eyes. You must be going through a tough time, so just find a way out of all this and face reality. A man like Chosen, who had overcome his past with Daniel thanks to the help his uncle offered him, was very observant of people's emotions. Dash at the moment was an open book of emotions he couldn't control, so it was easy for him to see it. How was Daniel? Chosen asked after some time in silence. Dash, who was unaware of Chosen's feelings about Daniel LaRusso, asked, Do you know him? I suppose both of you had the same master, you should be good friends, right? Not exactly, we were enemies a long time ago, but I got over it. Chosen said after a pause. I don't know Daniel LaRusso very well, but years ago, his daughter participated in a karate tournament. He didn't have a chance to win, but I did learn about Mr. Miyagi's karate. Chosen nodded, and just as he was about to continue the conversation, he said, You should go back as it's about to get dark. Come look for me earlier, and we can talk about more things. It was already late, Dash had been looking for a way to distract himself, and coincidentally, he had come to this place, but it was too late. Therefore, after exchanging some words, Dash said goodbye. Daniel Chosen murmured as he climbed the mountain towards his dojo. Welcome to the round of 16, the fights at this stage will be more intense and brutal than before. Each win in the match has increased, so winning right now would lead you to glory. Dash was among the finalists in the round of 16, after resting for a whole day, he was in perfect condition and ready for the next fight. What is the difference between a normal tournament and this one besides the blood and fights until the end? Well, what Dash had discovered is that the organizers of this tournament do not want to be seen or bothered. The rules, of course, can change, something that would start happening in the quarterfinals, but that is not Dash's problem for now. He was focused on his next fight, ready to give it his all. Santiago advised at his side, you're lucky, the opponent you're facing was injured in his previous fight, so you just have to keep your distance and come up with a plan to entertain the vultures. I understand, don't worry. Let the tournament begin, let the first fighters step forward. On a huge screen, Dash's image appeared, followed by his opponent, who had been ready for some time. Dash Hale against Alejandro Lopez. But when they were about to fight, a VIP room, thinking that the fight would be too boring, ordered something private, and the presenter nodded. Rule change, competitor Dash Hale faces a challenge from Lopez's sponsor, and offers 5 million to face two opponents who have previously been defeated. Those lunatic bastards. Santiago muttered as he saw three more fighters, no older than 20, approach the platform. The whole audience celebrated this, they knew that Dash's chances of being defeated this time were high, so everyone was curious to know what was about to happen. Dash didn't flinch, he quickly analyzed his opponents and smiled sinisterly. Lately, he had felt guilty about leaving his opponents in bad shape, but he supposed that now that problem would have no presence in this fight. If Dash Hale wins, he will not only get the winnings from this competition, but also 5 million dollars, the presenter shouted again as he heard the applause from the others. But at that moment, a voice was heard in the distance weapons. At that moment, several people entered with blunt weapons, and Dash's confused eyes watched as more would happen next. The sponsor of Dash Hale has bought a weapon for his fighter, please choose your preferred weapon. As the showcase with weapons approached, Dash focused his gaze on a wooden stick called a bow, and took it without hesitation. There were other more lethal weapons, but Dash knew how to use the wooden stick, so he chose it without any hesitation, and walked to the center of the arena. This time, the fights are unique, so Dash was in plain view of everyone as he was surrounded by four people. Ready. Fight. The referee, after starting the fight, left the arena. This type of fight was not at all controllable, so he left the arena as soon as the fight started. I can't let them get close to me, this was Dash's first thought when he knew he was the only one armed, so after starting the fight, he focused first on Lopez, who was injured. As he took a step forward, the other three figures moved toward him but not quickly enough. 
At that point, the stick in his hand slid straight toward Lopez's forehead, and the stick's tip, like a violent whip, hit his target with force. Crack. In an instant, Dash's movements became those of an exterminator. Stick strike, kicks, rear punches, forehead attacks, and many more were the points where he was attacking with all his might without stopping. This time, he was sure he would lose the fight, so Dash didn't give many the chance to advance as if they did, his weapon would be useless. Boom. 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 I thought I had chosen a useless weapon outside the arena. Jack's expression improved as he saw the good results in the fight after taking the wooden stick. Although that weapon was normal for many, in the right hands, it could mean a change in a complicated fight, just as it was happening at that moment. But at that moment, just when Dash had knocked down Lopez and two more figures, he had lost sight of his last target, who had appeared in his left zone. This forced Dash to let go of the stick and engage in close combat, clashing blows fast enough to overwhelm the crowd. Many of the blows landed on Dash's body, as he had completely ignored defense, but his blows landed on specific points to numb his opponent's limbs, who soon retreated due to pain. Damn it. Dash, after a few minutes of combat, had to be more aggressive because his other opponents were getting back on their feet. In the battle arena, everyone was excited. The fights they were witnessing were exactly what they had paid for, and they knew that Dash had learned from the right people. Regardless of his age, his blows were as lethal as those of an adult, and this intensified as the fight progressed. His opponents, after being hit in different vital points of their bodies, could no longer continue. Boom. Get up shouted a man on the ground, looking at Dash with absolute determination to keep fighting. But without any mercy, Dash took the wooden stick and began to hit the man's calves with force. Crack. Ah. Looking at his rivals on the ground, Dash's breathing began to stabilize, but still overwhelmed by the sensation of the battle, he remained alert. We have a winner. Santiago, who watched Dash, knew that this boy had received serious blows despite having a weapon. So, he immediately requested that Dash be attended to with the utmost care to ensure his optimal recovery for the quarterfinals. Was it so complicated even though you had a weapon? Santiago held Dash, who was coming down from the combat arena. Dash, still overwhelmed, responded directly, Stop talking nonsense, I need a cold bath to be able to get out of bed tomorrow. I can have two women accompany you all night, hahaha <laughs> Dash shook his head and said, I have a girlfriend, and besides, I'm still underage. In war, that doesn't matter, you're on a battlefield, so that should be your reward. You're happier than me for winning, you just won 5 million dollars in less than 10 minutes, why wouldn't you be happy? Sakura Bushido Kung Fu School come on. Again. Once more. Devon, who had been very worried before about her mother's surgery, had focused on school and soon on the All Valley Tournament. Many had been waiting for this tournament, and the recent dispute surrounding Cobra Kai, had caught the attention even of Sakura Bushido, which normally stayed away from problems. Are you sure you don't want to win the male division? Victor, who was in charge of supervising students affiliated for less than a year, commented while watching Devon's intense training. Mateo turned his gaze slightly and said, Do you want to fight in this tournament? The sensei will take us to a special competition, so we must be ready for that tournament. It would be too much if we kept winning the competitions of All Valley every year. Being a winner for five years in the male division is abusive if you ask me. Adam, who was cleaning the equipment, looked at his friends, listened to the conversation, and nodded. Victor sighed a bit disappointed and said, It's a shame we couldn't go to Japan. How is Dash competing in an elite tournament without telling us? Devon, who had stopped training the new students, approached a training dummy and began to hit it forcefully, while the others took a breath. Boom. 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 I'm sure she'll win the women's competition again. That would be her fourth title, so we would have nine titles in total in the history of this school. Victor, after saying this, added, By the way, have you heard all that drama about Cobra Kai? The area is crazy. Now many more people are talking about karate, and we all assume that this will increase at the beginning of this year. Adam shook his head and said, it's good and bad. I'm sure it will bring a bad reputation to martial arts. Just look at these videos. When have any of us fought outside of real competitions? Adam took out his cell phone and showed several Cobra Kai students fighting with bullies. This video was easy to identify by the uniforms and the comments on the video. Devon, who was trained, approached and said, they are being considered for the national karate tournament. Are they willing to get hurt in a local tournament? What we mean is that Cobra Kai's karate will sooner or later lead us all to ruin, isn't it? Devon had heard this from Dash, and now that everything's happening so fast, she must agree with him. But as a renowned dojo, they couldn't do anything more than stay away from trouble. This focus, you will serve as mentors for the new students, and maybe next year, you will participate just to feel familiar. Devon had heard from Mr. Kim that none of the more experienced ones besides the champions needed to participate, as there were many, and this would eventually turn the entire All Valley Tournament into Sakura Bushido. It had happened in recent years, so this year that decision was made, and everyone thought it was feasible. Many wanted to be in new competitions, so they did what they were asked. 
The new students are good. They will surely do a great job, Victor said, watching the training of more than 50 students in the outdoor area who had joined so far. Dash stared at his wounds in a massive mirror, furrowing his brow. It's not that bad compared to others, Santiago murmured, examining the slight bruises on Dash's muscles, as he continued to gaze at himself in the mirror. It wasn't until Santiago spoke that Dash smiled faintly and said, nothing to worry about. If the injuries worsen, I might consider other ideas, but for now, we can proceed to the quarterfinals. Certainly, he wanted to win this tournament, but if his next opponent was in perfect condition, he would be in even more trouble trying to reach the semifinals. Should I call Devin? Dash wondered, looking at his minor facial injuries, and frowned, knowing she would be concerned to learn he had been injured in this tournament. Take these medications, they'll relieve the pain, and by the time the next fight comes around, you look better than you do now, Santiago said, handing him two pills that Dash took without even looking at him. Due to the recent fights that have shortened their duration due to injuries throughout the tournament, many are discussing holding the quarterfinals, semifinals, and final on the same day, a week from now. Dash, who was eating, furrowed his eyebrows and said, wouldn't that be too sudden for the participants? It's not, kid. Things in these types of tournaments change from one moment to another, just like what happened in your match. The best fighters get injured to level the playing field and make everything more exciting, as happened with you and other fighters. Do you know who the best fighter in the tournament is so far? Dash had some names in mind, but couldn't recall their names correctly. Santiago looked at the nurses applying medicine to Dash's injuries and said, His name is Wei Chen, he knows Kung Fu as well as you, and is a favor to win the tournament. Moreover, you'll have to beat him if you want to win this tournament, since his sponsor and Jack, who is your sponsor, are not on good terms. Dash sighed as he focused on eating. Chinese opponents were the toughest he had faced, as they, like him, had trained since childhood. It's not surprising that children receive training from the age of 4, making them unbeatable warriors by the time they reach 15 to 20 years old. That's why the most outstanding warriors are the Chinese without any problem. Of course, this is mostly due to the numbers, and the true talents are the ones who end up taking glory in the battles. An example would be Dri, who has won numerous tournaments in China, defeating powerful opponents. However, he has lost to Cheng, who is undoubtedly one of the strongest opponents Dash has faced on equal terms. Well, whatever is decided will be informed to us immediately. Santiago, who had only been drinking good wines, relaxed as they had earned, Dash didn't know, but it was easy for him to enter this tournament due to his good combat record, something he didn't know and didn't really care to find out. I'm going to bet Dash just wanted to rest, so he stood up after eating something. Anything you need, don't forget to tell me, I'll do whatever you want. Stop drinking in the first place. Dash muttered as he shook his head at the man accompanying him. He preferred Mr. Kim, but he was currently preparing new students for other tournaments. Will we endure until the final? Dash wondered as he looked at Devin's incoming call and answered after hesitating for a moment. A week after the last confrontation, things took a turn for the better. For everyone, concluding the tournament in a single night was eagerly anticipated after enjoying other aspects of this place. Many couldn't wait, but they had to postpone the tournament for a week, because many fighters needed time to recover from their injuries, and be in better condition for the fights. Is the final going to be today? Devin on the other side of the screen looked at Dash, who was eating, and asked in a serious tone. Dash, after finishing his meal, said, in theory, the final is today, although after that, I'll spend a few days in review in case any injuries we aren't aware of are present in my condition. A few days before the All-Valley Tournament, will you be able to make it to the competition? Devin just wanted Dash to come back and not be alone in a country where they didn't speak the language, so knowing he was close to the final made her happy. I don't think I can make it in time, but I'll do my best Dash smiled slightly, concealing from Devin the fact that he might end up very injured. Too bad. At least we'll record how we break the faces of the Cobra Kai guys who have been acting crazy lately, Devin smiled, thinking about all the crazy things that had happened recently. Dash, who had heard about everything that had happened with Cobra Kai, smiled slightly. From what he had heard, the relationship with Daniel LaRusso had worsened, and now they were in some kind of war. But we have more students, right? Dash raised his eyebrows, thinking he would be much more at ease watching all that drama from the sidelines. Devin smiled and said, the way they teach their students in Cobra Kai would be good if applied only in tournaments, but it seems they've taken it as a lifestyle. It was well known that Cobra Kai students showed no mercy, but that ideology is very risky to implement nowadays, since many were not up for senseless fights. Dash was unaware of the rivalry Johnny was having with Daniel, but if things escalated, history would repeat itself as in the past. But at this moment, these were not Dash's concerns, so he said, before hanging up, is there anything you wanted to tell your boyfriend before the final fights? Don't have mercy on your opponents, they're still older than you, so it's not the time to be considerate with others. Devin looked at Dash and nodded, knowing he was okay. After the call time was up, they bid each other farewell. After the call ended, Dash remained silent. At least this was about to end, and the winner would be decided based on that. 
All the fighters who had advanced to the quarterfinals had been gathering in the outdoor area where the combat would take place. The VIP members, as expected, had started their big bets, something Dash was completely oblivious to. Hey Jack, want to make a bet on the performance of our two fighters? The age difference isn't much, and it seems like your guy has a good chance of reaching the semi-final. Carpio approached Jack, who was talking with some colleagues, and proposed a bet. Jack, who expected this, asked, what do you want to bet? Your complete collection of private paintings. It would be an honor to have them in my living room after tonight. Carpio smiled sarcastically and said, sure, I'd give you anything I could in exchange for that. Jack furrowed his brows, and after hesitating for a moment, he nodded. Then I want your complete collection of antique cars, lately, I've been getting interested in engines. Carpio, who was smiling, fell completely silent after hearing what Jack wanted in exchange for his victory in this bet. In that sense, the offer might surpass billions of dollars, although the cars are not worth much more than the paintings, the collection was quite extensive. But you know that art is no less than your cars, so I also want your yachts and islands in the Black Sea. Jack added while looking seriously at Carpio. Both knew that their fighters could lose before the final, so this type of bet was extremely dangerous. Carpio had done this thinking that Jack would refuse, there was no way he would say yes in his eyes. But he was surprised that this was not the case, so he said, you're asking for too much. A fighter is almost at the age limit for this tournament. Wouldn't you have the advantage with a 15-year-old kid? Jack acted surprised at Carpio's cowardice. Then let's do it. If your fighter gets further than mine in the competition, what you've asked for will be yours. Carpio shook hands, and this bet was immediately registered to avoid any problems. By the time Carpio left, Jack's assistant asked, Do you want us to inform your fighter about this? Just tell him that if he wins, he'll have enough money to live for the rest of his life without doing anything, fight well, and prepare properly because tonight is going to be very long. Jack didn't want to think about Dash's possibilities, all he wanted was for him to be aware that his victory was at stake, and he should only know that. Whether it's a defeat or victory, I hope Dash has the balls to go all the way to the end, tonight will be an incredible night, all fighters will battle, and we will finally know who will be the winner of the Hidden Dragon Tournament. Are you excited to find out the results of this tournament? Ha! Huh. Outside the combat arena, Dash struck the bags numerous times, working with a bag held by Santiago, to warm up his muscles, and be ready for his fight. Thump. 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 Dash was too fast with his punches, and there was serenity on his face, as if he wasn't tired of training at this speed. Next to him, Santiago nodded in approval, surprised by the physique Dash had achieved at his young age, and said, Good, kid, save energy for your opponents and focus on stretching. Dash smiled and withdrew his fist from Santiago's gloves. It had been about a month since this competition started, and it was certainly a long time considering that a tournament usually ends in a day. But considering that the matches were not scored, and the winner was the one left standing, it was understandable that the organizers gave them more time to recover a bit. Do you have information about who I'm going to face? Dash asked while looking at Santiago, who was very nervous. Santiago nodded and said, The lunatic you'll face in these quarterfinals is named Ivan Petrov, outstanding in Sambo. He has dominated the scene with his skill in throws and bone-breaking submissions. His aggressiveness on the ground has earned him a solid 78% victory rate in the last 5 years. How British is he in close combat? Dash asked while tying his long hair and looking towards the platform. Santiago thought about it and said, he's tough, you must be careful with his bursts of speed, because if he takes you down, you won't be able to get back up. Dash has seen some replays of how he had won his previous matches and frowned, knowing he would be a tough opponent. A damn tank, Santiago muttered, looking at the size of the opponent Dash would face, and pointed, but just focus on hitting his nerves, you'll finish him off as long as you stay focused. Dash didn't fully believe this the way Santiago was saying it, because combat sambo is a hybrid martial art of Russian origin. It encompasses techniques from all combat distances. Striking with fists, elbows, knees, legs, and close quarters combat, throws, projections, strangulations, joint locks, and all kinds of submissions. Considering the size of his opponent, things could get a bit out of control. First time I'm excited, I should break his nose, or that guy will end up breaking my bones, Dash thought, looking at the brutal appearance of the man who should be around 24 years old. Santiago smiled on the side and slowly adjusted his voice, murmuring, go for his head, hit his forehead well, and he'll go to sleep like a baby on Independence Day. Dash, wearing his black kung fu suit, looked at Santiago and said, if I fail, he'll crush me. Do you know the takedown force those guys have? They're tanks, but I trust you'll win Santiago didn't say much, but pulled out a cross from under his shirt and pointed, the one above protects us, go and hit as much as you want. Hail against Petrov. On the screen, the first fight appeared, so immediately after hearing his name, Dash jumped quickly into the arena and looked at his opponent in the distance, easily measuring 2 meters in height. Under the watchful eyes of the audience, Dash began to take small jumps, while analyzing the kind of fight he could develop in the next few seconds. 
Come on, son, don't be ashamed and go for his damn testicles. Santiago shouted from Dash's corner, who was ecstatic about this fight. Listening to Santiago's instructions, Dash shook his head on the side while raising his fists. The rules are simple, the fight doesn't end until one of you surrenders or is out of combat. Bleed, cry, or have a bone broken, that doesn't matter, just win, understood. The referee looked at both fighters and shouted, fight. Arg. As soon as the fight started, Petrov launched himself against Dash at an incredibly fast speed, and at that moment, the chances were getting smaller and smaller. Dash, who was watching, felt nervous, so initially, he jumped and kicked towards Petrov's head, but he took his leg, and forcefully threw him into the air. Damn. Dash, who was thrown into the air, covered his head, and feeling his body collide with the ground immediately after, he stood up. As soon as Dash stood up, he saw Petrov, who was just a few meters away, raising his guard and receiving a punch heading towards his chest. Hum. Dash's gaze turned cold, his thoughts aligned with the force and speed of the opponent, but what caught his attention the most was Petrov's resilience. Here. As Petrov tried to launch himself forward again, Dash threw a powerful kick that forcefully hit his opponent's leg, and made him step back. With limited possibilities of close-range attacks, winning required focusing on long-range attacks. But at that moment, after his first kick, Dash's concentrated face showed a hint of surprise, as he saw Petrov still able to move, and that was indeed a pleasant surprise. The speed of those trained in Sambo is terribly fast but comes in bursts, a sudden burst of speed to take down their enemies, and dominate the fight on the ground. Right after his first kick, when Dash thought his hit was strong enough to hold Petrov for a few minutes, he ran towards him, covering his face and preparing to throw powerful punches. Pump. The power of Petrov's punches was extremely worrying, Dash had to deflect the first attack without taking it directly, or he could break some bones in the process. Taking control of Petrov's first attack, Dash knew there was no time to retreat. Moreover, to the amazement of the crowd, the fighting style he now wanted to adopt was one where he had to be faster and hit specific points. I got you Dash muttered, and as soon as he took a step forward, his hands, like whips, began to strike at a speed that even Petrov couldn't match. While Dash's painful punches hit his opponent's body, Petrov, who knew he shouldn't take too much damage, threw a punch that collided with Dash's dodging head, and another one was heading towards his face. But at that moment, Dash tilted his body, and with his elbow, he hit Petrov's ribs three times. Crack. 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 The same hit three times causes damage, Petrov felt this, and unexpectedly, he quickly retreated backward, falling to the ground slowly and deliberately. But before Petrov even touched the ground, Dash, ignoring the pain in his body, took a step forward, changed the position of his fists, and to prevent Petrov's advance, he had thrown a kick in the air. Hum. This mistake was not common, but Dash, who knew that it would only bring him advantages, changed the position of his feet, exerted force in his legs, and suddenly, a kick so strong that it would knock out an animal, impacted Petrov's head. Crack. The broken jaw of Petrov was clearly hurt by those closest, everyone was aware that a man couldn't easily face such a kick. Broken jaw that familiar sound was clearly from Petrov's jaw, making many celebrate even more as a smaller person had taken down a much larger and muscular man. But Petrov didn't want to surrender, he needed the money to achieve his dreams, and it wasn't the time to throw the fight just for a broken jaw. Days, with a bloody mouth and fists still tightly clenched, Petrov looked to Dash, who also had blood on his cheek, and raised his fists even higher. In this chaos, it's better to surrender Dash thought, and seeing that his opponent had no intention of surrendering, he advanced once again. You, Pump. 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 With a serene expression on his face, Dash's hands began to impact Petrov's body, but he wasn't unscathed in the process. It may not be known, but neck punches are the most painful, especially when they hit the ribs. After witnessing this brutal confrontation, many spectators were thrilled to know that there was still a fight. But as Dash gave more punches, he felt more tired, he had to save his best martial arts for the other fights, so he had to be much more precise in this thing that wasn't making it easy for him. Just when Petrov wanted to launch himself at Dash to try to dominate the fight on the ground, that gave Dash the opportunity to attack Petrov's leg directly once again, but he continued forward, wanting to win this fight. With no way out, Dash focused on hitting Petrov's forehead over and over again without stopping until he had fallen to the ground. Under the astonished looks of the spectators, Dash's elbow brutally impacted Petrov's forehead, and waiting for it to stop was his only thought. Once again, one attack after another was launched mercilessly, and Dash's desperate gaze focused only on causing pain. Your victory is my victory. That sentence he told Devin back then shone in Dash's mind, who stepped back a bit overwhelmed by all that blood, and seeing Petrov on the ground. Dash Hale is a winner. The auditorium exploded in applause and cheers as they realized that the victory had been totally decided. Dash looked at the roaring crowd from his vantage point on the combat arena, while an ironic look shone in his eyes before shifting his gaze. When he jumped off the platform, Santiago approached and asked, Are you okay? Will he be okay? Dash looked at Petrov being taken out on a stretcher and asked slightly affected. 
He'll be okay, rest. Dash, I'm going to tattoo your damn name. That fight was incredible. As Dash walked back to his seat, Santiago exclaimed very excited about the victory they had just achieved. Do you think I can use bandages? Dash looked at some of his bruised knuckles and asked while several people took care of helping him recover. Santiago looked at other competitors and said, there won't be any problem. As you mentioned, your knuckles have been trained, that's why no one suggested you wear gloves. At this moment, with the first quarter final fight over and the audience excited, the second fight immediately began, which was just as brutal as the previous one. The first fight was Wei Chen, who would be Dash's next opponent if he made it to the semifinals. His fighting style was fast, as expected from Kung Fu, and at first glance, it seemed like watching Cheng in his movements. Ah. Oh, did he just break his arm? That lunatic for God's sake, Dash, I wouldn't blame you if you surrendered now before facing that monster. Santiago sympathized with Dash, who was very calm, observing Wei Chen, in case he discovered something. Surrender. I might break a bone, it's not that bad. But at least I believe I have the level to face him, Dash wasn't sure, that opponent was incredibly superior, and he knew perfectly well that being limited by his injuries, made the fight even more complicated. In front of Dash, the fights kept going on until one, in particular, caught the attention of the entire audience. The fighters who both handled Muay Thai, fell to the ground after connecting two brutal blows to each other's heads. Neither showed signs of getting up, and at that moment, the countdown began. Of course, what made Dash and his group wonder what would happen next left them speechless. If both competitors were disqualified, that meant there would be a fighter without an opponent in the semi-final, and that wouldn't be fair in many ways. Neither will get up Dash looked at both fighters on the ground and shook his head. Santiago's expression became even more somber. This wasn't good for the fights because things could change in a direction they didn't have control over. He knew this tournament had no rules, so a final could well change after such an unexpected result. What will happen now? Elliot didn't understand anything about this tournament, but from what he had seen, it was very different from the others. Not only was it subject to changes, but there were also fights that developed in completely unprecedented ways. Santiago, who was thinking, muttered, even if we know the answer, we won't be able to do anything. With two competitors out, things have become very complicated for us, it's useless to worry, let's first see what the organizers will do. Dash nodded slightly at this response. His gaze slid over all the balconies in the place where the VIPs were, many of them were puzzled by this disappointing result. But what Dash was looking for in watching them was to know what they thought. Many were discussing heatedly, and after a few minutes of removing the fighters who didn't get up, they came to an answer. That fight has been brutal, it's a shame that neither could stand up. But for the sake of the competition, a tough discussion has taken place, and we have decided that the last three finalists will fight each other in a three-way match. Same rules, only one winner, and the last fight before we know who will be the last fighter in the semi-final. The host, after announcing another change in the last fight, made it clear that the remaining three fighters would fight each other to determine the winner. Listen carefully, Dash, surrender if you see both fighters attacking you at the same time Santiago, who was sweating cold, frowned at the serious disadvantages of this sudden change. I understand. It's not a joke, if both decide to attack you, no matter how good you are, you only have one who is in his 20s, they surpass 20 years of age, so in experience and strength, they will be far superior to you. Even if you're in perfect condition, you must consider when to surrender. Don't worry, I'll keep that in mind. Dash nodded slightly in response after hearing the warnings. He knew perfectly well that this wasn't a fair fight for anyone, many things could happen, and he decided not to consider this fight as an official one in his undefeated career. Now, in a fight where the three fighters are enemies, things could get a bit curious. It needed to be known first who is the strongest to then go after him. The problem comes when there is no awareness of that. We should go for Wei Chen. This thought crossed Dash's mind for a few brief seconds. The other standout fighter, who surely would win, is called Rafael Gutierrez and is from Brazil. He handles mixed martial arts very well, and has won so far through good combat skills, although he is not at Wei Chen's level. Ah. Looking at the combat arena, Rafael finished the fight with a powerful kick to his opponent's ribs, and quickly crowned himself as the last finalist. We have 10 minutes of rest, let's think of a strategy Santiago, who wouldn't fight, was the one most nervous along with Dash, that old man is indeed a very peculiar person. Let the competitors enter. Everyone fell silent as the three competitors took a step forward, each positioning themselves at the same distance from the others, carefully observing each other's weaknesses in a few glances. Distrust, fear, and caution were evident in each of their gazes, every hint of a strategy was shining in their eyes. Whom to attack first? If I step forward, will the others attack me? What should I do if both competitors attack me simultaneously? Questions after questions were racing through everyone's thoughts, while Dash stood on the side with a calm expression. My father always told me to go for the strongest first. There's no honor in this battle, so I shouldn't feel bad about it, Dash murmured as he nodded in a greeting gesture to Wei Chen. On the other hand, Raphael simply raised his fist, and all three prepared themselves. 
All right, ready. Fight. Upon these words, Dash's calm expression changed. No one expected a fighter in the arena to face two opponents at the same time, making it intriguing for the new VIPs who had suggested this. Even though Dash had faced four fighters before, none of them were experts, and he also had a weapon. Now, things were different as each of them had reached the final based on their skills. Advancing slowly to the center, Dash visualized his enemies and kept his breathing steady. And just at the moment when they were close enough to each other, the battle erupted when Wei Chen made his first move. Boom. At that moment, Wei Chen attacked Dash with a kick aiming for his leg, which was avoided by blocking with his right foot. Raphael, obviously not one to stand idly, seized the opportunity, seeing that Dash had momentarily lost his field of vision, and approached, launching a straight kick that hit Dash's stomach, sending him backward. This shift in the fight excited many, but Dash was anything but thrilled about the brawl. As he retreated, Dash visualized his rivals, and at that moment, Wei Chen attacked Raphael with core punches. Don't leave me behind Dash thought, advancing towards the fight, alarming Wei Chen and Raphael, who were facing each other. In a brief moment, the three clashed with powerful attacks seeking to inflict damage. Everyone was surprised, they thought each one would try to form an alliance to eliminate one rival first, and then continue the fight among themselves. But now, it seemed there was no truce between them. Crap. Fighting in this kind of battle is very tangled, Dash knew he had many opportunities to attack, but had to cover himself from different enemy attacks, and avoid being hit by a third of them. Looking at Wei Chen, Dash decided to exert more pressure on him, because he was the strongest and possibly in better condition. Making this decision, he began launching more attacks at him. Boom. 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 Raphael also understood this point and started putting even more pressure on Wei Chen, who moments later took a defensive position to avoid being harmed. With unsettling flashes in his eyes, Dash, who had received a punch near his eye, began to struggle to maintain the intensity of the fight. But at that moment, Dash, who believed they had the advantage against Wei Chen, did not expect Raphael to attack him directly, completely ignoring his defense against Wei Chen, who was the clear target. Without wasting time, Wei Chen, who had numerous cuts and had fallen into a disadvantage, seized this opportunity to now attack Dash, who had fallen into his own disadvantage. When the two made their move, they showed almost good coordination. This dual offensive approaching from the left and right at the same time was a difficult situation to handle simultaneously. Dash was focused on how the two were attacking him, with a strange nervousness welling up from his heart, although what was happening was within his expectations. At that moment, his right hand formed a fist while his left opened into a palm. Attack and defense at the same time, he had to cause damage while defending against the strongest. Crap. Boom. When a fist and palm collided in defense against attack, loud sounds of blows echoed from the hands of the three. On this occasion, only one had made contact, and that was Raphael, who had also received a strong blow under his ribs, while Wei Chen had collided with the defense. The great force of the punch towards Raphael had shaken his bones. He, absorbed by the attack, did not expect Ash to choose him to receive the blow and counterattack, ignoring the pain. Go all out, no mercy. After this previous exchange, Raphael, who had felt Ash's true strength, felt a real urgency to finish him in this fight before thinking about Wei Chen. He looked at the other opponent, who was surprised by Dash's defense, and shouted. Santiago in the distance put his hands on his head, he knew this could happen, and it was really unlucky that they had chosen Dash to be the puppet of these two. Can't he have a weapon or something? Elliot, who was on the side, was focused on the fight. He didn't want to miss anything since he needed to make sure Dash was okay at all times. From what he could see, Raphael took the initiative to damage Dash, after knowing that Wei Chen had received enough blows to defeat him. So, that strategy was to ensure his final victory. If he focuses on Raphael, he can win, I hope, the martial arts of the duo attacking Dash, had shifted to a more aggressive style, with fists and kicks directed towards his body. Both were vicious movements aimed at hitting areas that would leave any man unconscious. Facing such brutal attacks, Dash initially felt somewhat nervous. However, his current state was no longer as rigid as it had been at the beginning, and his defensive posture began to improve. Leaning on his powerful Northern Dragon style, along with his mastery of theoretical combat knowledge, Dash gradually managed to engage in an equal fight against two enemies, shifting from a defensive position to an offensive one. In response, Wei Chen and Raphael, who were not in better condition than Dash, had to step back. In just a few minutes, Dash had stopped thinking about winning the fight, and focused on giving his best, regardless of the outcome. His blows were more ferocious, targeting the vital points of his enemies to try to numb each of their movements, putting them in a difficult situation. Damn it, how can he endure a fight at that level? Faced with Dash's increasingly effective attacks, the expressions of Raphael and Wei Chen changed to embarrassment. During this battle, they could feel that their opponent was evolving at an excessively fast pace, as if his adaptation to combat had no equal among fighters worldwide. I can't move my right arm. 
Raphael felt a sudden wave of heaviness in his right arm, and furred his brow as he tried to move it. After a brief clash, Wei Chen would dash his blood on his face, frowned slightly and realized that Dash wouldn't give up unless he fell into a very unfavorable situation. Seeing that the two were in a complicated situation, Dash ignored all his injuries and, overwhelmed by the fighting spirit, continued forward, striking forcefully towards Raphael, who was closer. Under Raphael's frightened gaze, Dash began to engage in a furious fight, ignoring his defenses. Crack. 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 A series of deep sounds echoed as Dash's fists made contact with Raphael's jaw, ribs, and head. Dash took a few steps back, feeling a warm liquid dripping from his forehead and shaking his head slightly. On the other side, Wei Chen, currently recovering from his numb muscles, turned his head, and in a few seconds, Raphael had fallen to the ground. Nothing is wrong, every path is written. Let's end this, shall we? Dash, with a sinister smile stained with blood, lunged towards Wei Chen, who was no better off than him. Boom. 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 In just moments, both entered a fight where Kung Fu dominated each of their movements. Wei Chen looked at Dash for a brief moment and advanced towards him, knowing that he was facing a true warrior, so young and strong that it was admirable. Just as the two engaged in a close combat, Dash feigned a move and launched a kick that hit Wei Chen's chest, as he tried to cover his face. But as he fell to the ground, he raised his right leg in response, avoiding Dash's advance, gaining an advantage and getting back on his feet. At that moment, both unleashed a powerful kick that collided with each other, making them recoil miserably. As the fight progressed, Dash felt more and more tired. He had lost sensation in his hands for some time, and his expression became increasingly brutal as he slowly lost vision. Crack. Wei Chen was not in a better condition, the battle's pace became slower and, by strategic decision, both decided to step back to prepare their final attacks. Just one more blow. Dash looked at Wei Chen, and, thinking about something, began to raise his injured leg, putting all his weight on the one in better condition. What are you trying to do? Wei Chen thought as he prepared to win this fight by any means. Dash closed his eyes, recalling that kick that Dri had been perfecting after his victory with Cheng, and just out of curiosity, he learned it. Now, whether that move would result in his victory was a complete mystery. This was his last move, he had no strength left in his hands, and his knuckles were worse than ever. If he received one more blow to his stomach, he couldn't get up, and a hit to the head would leave him lying on the ground. In these last fights, he hadn't used his kicks much, so now was the perfect time to do so. There was nothing to hold back, he had to end this fight in the next attack regardless of the results. This was not about money, love, hatred, or regret. This was about Dash's own struggle throughout his life in this new opportunity. Now was his moment, he wanted to know if this was where he lost, and what would happen after this fight, with his burning desire to keep improving. Ah. Wei Chen looked at Dash and, knowing that victory was close, shouted, raised his guard, and ran towards him with all his strength in his muscles. Free as the wind Dash thought as he analyzed Wei Chen's distance and, when he was at a distance, made a leap after turning around. The inverted jump was dangerous because it exposed his back to the enemy, so if he couldn't hit, it would be a guaranteed defeat on his part. But Wei Chen, who saw Dash's previously unseen movements, stopped, looked up, and at that moment, a kick landed on his forehead. Boom. That kick was precise, it hit where it should, and it sent Wei Chen to the ground in a calculated fall. He did it. I can't believe it. Dash, feeling a burning pain in his leg, knew he was at the limit. So, after seeing that none of the opponents in front of him moved, he sighed with relief. My victory is your victory, Devin Dash murmured as his eyes slowly closed while still standing. Although he wasn't entirely unconscious, he couldn't move anymore. Dash Hail, winner. Finally, the Hidden Dragon tournament had successfully concluded without any problems or deaths, unlike the previous year. Although the final battle was not what many expected, witnessing a fight between three fighters was something new that ultimately satisfied everyone. As expected, the champion who remained standing was Dash Hale, even though everyone concluded that it wasn't fair to award him the championship because he fainted while still on his feet. Others argued that remaining standing despite losing the fight was more commendable, and everyone agreed to give Dash the title of winner. However, Wei Chen, who was the last to fall, would receive rewards as if he had won first place. Regardless of what many think, the last one to fall wins, those are the simple rules, and they wouldn't be broken by a simple bet between two magnates. As for Carpio, he was satisfied with the fight, so he completely ignored anything else, and preferred to leave, rather than stay in this place and get angrier. What comforted him was that Jack wouldn't end up taking all his cars, he only wanted the newest ones, so he sighed in relief, even though it was a great humiliation. So, while the winners received their rewards, the others began to withdraw. In a hospital room, Dash lay still asleep while being monitored around the clock by the best doctors. In addition to bruises all over his body, he had serious injuries to his knuckles and muscles along his arms, but it was not alarming. His right calf was very swollen, but with proper treatment, it was not in danger. 
It could be said the dash was lucky, he wasn't in danger, but he ended up very battered. As the morning approached, Santiago, who was taking care of organizing all the paperwork Dash had to do to receive the money, did it all thanks to Elliot, who was Dash's assistant provided by his father. Do you think we should inform Dash's family and update them on his current condition? Elliot hesitated to inform Frederick, even though it was his job. Santiago on the side opened his eyes and said, What you're seeing are battle scars. Do you really think that's a problem? I've seen fighters come out of the arena in worse condition. Do you want to get him into more trouble? His muscles are stimulated by those masks, he has the best medical assistance, and he's recovering after a brutal tournament. Do you really think it's time to call his father? Just call him and inform him that Dash won the tournament. But right now, I'm rested. Everyone in the room turned to look at Dash, who had awakened, and then breathed a sigh of relief, even though they knew there was no problem. Kid, that fight was horrifying, we thought one of you had died. Santiago looked at Dash, who was looking at him, and couldn't help but be amazed. Is it really about money? Even someone for money wouldn't be so crazy as to fight in that way. The aftermath could leave significant consequences, and most of the time, it's not worth it. Regarding this decision, Dash didn't say anything. He had his own dreams and goals, so he believed it was time to show everyone who he was. After this fight, he would indeed take things slower, enjoy life even more, and only participate in truly important tournaments that could enhance his merit. This was the last time he took such a risk. He wanted to move forward, but didn't want to damage the healthy body he had in fights that no longer made sense. Now he had proven that he could surpass himself, that the dash from before could surpass himself, and the only thing limiting him was his lungs. I'll be back home soon, Devon. Santiago, who saw Dash fall asleep again, shook his head and said, I'm going to smoke. Damn, I should be happy, and right now I feel a knot in my balls. Elliot on the side looked at Santiago and, after hesitating for a moment, made a call. Yes Mr. Hale, your son won the tournament, but this time, he ended up a bit more injured than last time. He's sleeping, tomorrow I'll send you a picture, but there's nothing to worry about. Hale mentioned late at night, Frederick watched the fight that his son had with a guy named Wei Chen, and smiled proudly at seeing him win. Although I don't know if I'm a good father, I'm certain I have a good son, after watching the fight, he felt proud and not scared at all. Each one fought their own battles, even he. Now that his son was ready, it was time to take life more relaxed. Curse, just look at my face, I look like a damn zombie, Dash stared at his face, and felt the world closing in on him, because he had to go back home. What's the damn problem, kid? Santiago on his side, who was eating popcorn in his underwear, didn't understand Dash's concern. Dash looked at himself in the mirror and said, can't you see my face? Questions will be asked if we go to the airport, do you have a damn hamster in your brain? Then spend more time here until you recover, damn it, what's the rush to go home? Santiago asked, slightly bewildered. Was he being scolded by a kid? I'm going to take a shower Dash's dejected experience remained unchanged. He looked at Santiago, and after wanting to let go, he went to shower. Don't forget you received the prize today, wear something nice, stop talking nonsense, old man. How do you expect me to wear something nice when the only nice thing on my body is this damn Magno's pajama? Damn, those were on sale. Dash didn't respond and walked towards the bathroom. What he had painfully discovered was that he found it hard to do anything, and if it weren't for Santiago's help, he would have really struggled. Now, looking at himself in the mirror, he wondered, was it worth it? Honestly, he no longer remembered the fight he had with his father, but there was still a bitter blind pain in his mouth. He just wanted to vent, and he did it in the best possible way. Now, his immaturity was not questionable, as he did this for Devon and her mother too. But deep down, he was aware that regardless of what had happened, his father would have helped Devon's mother, and he didn't feel that at that moment. He was confused, he wanted to go back and feel accompanied once again. The loneliness in his soul had reappeared, and he believed that if he stayed alone this time, there would be no one to pull him out of that deep and dark abyss. I'm so sorry, what else can I do to have a simply normal life? Dash wondered as he looked at himself in the mirror and cried silently. He wanted parents who loved him, he really wanted to run and tell them everything that worried him, but he knew he couldn't do that long ago. The words didn't come out, and he thought it was fine, that was the path he had to take in both of his lives. Dash wanted to accept the idea of never telling his mother that he loved her. Since he was a child, he had taken it out on his body in training because he couldn't do anything else. If you're listening, if you're somewhere, please, save Devon's mother since she's a good girl, Dash murmured as he emotionally collapsed for a few minutes. After taking a shower, he left behind those bitter thoughts and tried to push them aside, as he walked away with Santiago to a room where the awards would be given to him. Just keep quiet and listen, I'll take care of the negotiations, Santiago said as he opened the door for Dash, who was walking with the crutch. Mr. Hale, please have a seat. A man in a suit walked over to a chair. Dash nodded in gratitude and said, make this brief, I'm still very exhausted from the fights. Of course, as you were told, you generated over 3.8 million dollars in the tournament. 
5 million in bets, 4.5 million in donations, and numerous prizes that would be delivered later, after designating a suitable place to give them. What would that be? Dash asked intrigued about what they would give him in addition to the money. Properties, cars, privileges, and many more interesting things Dash nodded and asked, how would the prize be delivered? Through a lottery, you get a $30 million seal that would be given to you as an official reward, and the rest is thanks to the tournament you won. Weren't they 13? Santiago asked a little confused. That's a gift from Mr. Jack to Dash for his magnificent victory. He's very happy not to have lost a small bet he made, so that's just a small reward. Then send him my thanks. Seeing that all the questions had been answered, Dash's attitude relaxed more, knowing that he wouldn't have to meet anyone else after this. Shortly after, Dash turned to Santiago, who immediately nodded, indicating that everything was fine, and said, Now that Dash has fulfilled this tournament, we are grateful for your invitation. Oh, don't mention it, we hope you have a good life with this money from now on, and take fewer risks in such dangerous fights. Well, someone else's importance is irrelevant. Dash thought as he stood up. After hearing all those words without paying much attention, Dash just wanted to leave this place for somewhere less suffocating before returning home. Of course, he couldn't go back right now, as that would worry not only Devon but many other people. Considering that the All-Valley Tournament was near, there was no reason to return so quickly. He didn't want to distract his friends and hope for good results from them in that competition. When everyone left the hotel, Santiago, who had received his share of the money, looked at Dash and said, I haven't been so excited since I left those dojo competitions. Don't you have a place for me somewhere? Sakura Bushido had a good reputation, and it was known that there was a large branch in China, while the smaller one was in the United States, so for many, it would have been an appropriate time to expand. But Dash, who had other plans, shook his head and said, There's no place where someone can stand you, old man, but you can always come back, I prefer the green fields. Well, kid, good luck, and don't go around fighting Santiago took a car and bid farewell to Dash, who just smiled slightly. Elliot beside him, had rented a car and asked, Are we leaving immediately? No, let's visit Mr. Cho's in All Valley Karate Championship. This year is the 50th championship, how time passes in this place. Devin heard the voices of the younger students getting out of cars and smiled slightly. She was excited, today was finally the day when the younger ones would showcase everything they had learned to the public. The older ones weren't as aggressive, they knew that the fighters' experience in Valley White matches had decreased, so their role would be to support in the audience. Many things had changed since last year, the opening of Cobra Kai, and the return of well-prepared dojos, hoping to defeat the champions of Sakura Bushido, who, by the way, would only have one participant. Do you think if I don't use my right hand, I can still participate in the tournament? Victor got out of a car and mentioned this to other younger students. Devin looked at him with disappointment and said, You considered for the central team in the nationals, and you want to play in a tournament like this. We've gained a lot in this place, so it's good to have new champions. Adam nodded at these words and said, It's a pity to see many students who could have entered our Kung Fu school, many of them joined another school. Not everyone is ready to learn what is taught in our school, Devin looked in the distance at the Cobra Kai kids, and was surprised that there was only one woman. It wasn't ideal, but now that she knew there were more women than in previous years, she felt more at ease. Well, the training is crazy, murmured a guy named Colin, who was one of the most outstanding among the new students. But now I have muscles, have you seen my biceps? Asked a guy named Carlos as he showed off his muscles. On the other side outside where the tournament would take place, Miguel was warming up, throwing punches in the air with a fierce expression on his face. Boom. 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 Eli, now known as Hawk, looked at his friend and advised, Calm down, Miguel, save some of that energy for the tournament. Miguel, who was extremely angry due to the recent breakup with Samantha LaRusso, ignored his friend and continued training without stopping. Aisha, who was beside Eli, lightly hit him and said, Don't bother advising him, he's been angry since he broke up with his girlfriend. Where's the sensei? The tournament will start soon, and he's nowhere to be seen, Eli looked into the distance at a very calm group of young people, all dressed in the same sports attire. Are they from Sakura Bushido? Bert, who was beside Eli, turned his head and nodded when he saw someone familiar in the crowd. Currently champions and have been for five years, we'll have a chance to take the title now that their male division champion won't participate. It's a shame, I heard he's in Japan. Eli had no problem with Dash, in fact, he considered him a good friend who didn't judge his appearance even before learning karate. Aisha looked at Devon and a group of girls getting out of cars. The women's division has more participants than I thought. Do you think we have fewer chances? You're the strongest, you'll win for sure. Again, when will the sensei arrive? He'll arrive. Bert, on the side, got a little nervous, remembering what he saw last night, and said, I wouldn't be too sure about that, what are you talking about? I saw him last night at the mall, I went to buy a carton of milk when suddenly I heard him yelling in the parking lot. Bert recalled what he saw yesterday and was truly overwhelmed. 
Aisha got nervous and asked in a confused tone, why didn't you mention it before? Come on, we're so used to seeing him drunk that I thought it wasn't a big deal Eli, with his hands in his pockets, said, we're here, and he's not. Officially, we're in a big damn problem, and if something happened to him, what could happen? For God's sake, I've seen so many things on the internet that it's not a surprise to see people throwing themselves off cliffs with their cars. The sensei would never leave life that way, that's for women, and he doesn't have the profile to do something like that, Aisha wasn't convinced by Eli's words, and stopped him before he said anything else foolish. Eli had nothing more to say, so he pointed, never mind, we're here, we'll have to do this without him. Miguel, who was about to say something, stopped upon hearing a voice in the distance asking everyone, do what without me? Sensei. We thought you wouldn't come Johnny looked at his students and said, I may not always win, but I never walk away from a fight. Miguel, on the side, who remained serious, pointed, then let's register. Not yet. Looking at his students and thinking a bit about what he wanted to say, Johnny looked at everyone and said, there's one last lesson I want to teach you. Johnny looked at the standout students his students would face and said, let's go inside, we'll have a better atmosphere in there. Mr. Kim looked at his more than 30 students with less than a year of experience in the circle, and nodded as he saw that everyone had made it this far. Now that Dash isn't here, do you want to say a few words? Mr. Kim looked at Devin, who was standing beside him, seeking a response from his star student. Devin stood in front of everyone, briefly closed her eyes, thought about what Dash would say in this situation, and said, We've come a long way, everyone should know that we don't always get the same opportunity in life twice. Today is a special day, each one will prove everything they have been learning at Sakura Bushido to the public. Don't be disappointed by a bad result in the tournament. Remember that Sakura Bushido is not a place where you learn to be punching machines, here, we learn a purpose, and that is to train the body and reach levels we have never dreamed of. She looked at everyone now wearing the karate uniform with the Sakura Bushido logo, and nodded with admiration. After a brief pause, she said, although our school is not the oldest, we boast more wins than any other, and that puts us in a special position. Everyone felt excited, they were ready to give it their all in this competition, and wouldn't stop until they did. Many of them didn't believe they could ever feel this excitement, so participating in this tournament made all their training worthwhile. Devin walked back and forth and said, We won the last two championships, but now with the growth of our reputation, we've decided that only the champions and students with less than a year of experience will participate this year to generate more competitive spirit. Remember, we fight for ourselves and not for a championship, you're all still starting, so give your best and, above all, have fun. Devin said as she bowed to her peers. Let's go, let's show them our karate Devin smiled while also feeling the excitement of camaraderie. Despite feeling mentally unstable for this tournament, she would ensure to stay calm and focused to take home the prize in the women's division. Mr. Kim looked towards where the Cobra Kai students were gathering and asked, is that the Dojo Dash wanted to have to train Sakura Bushido members in karate? Devin smiled slightly and nodded. More than a good teacher, Dash wanted its history, he wanted Cobra Kai to be the karate division for Sakura Bushido, a good idea, but it was rejected. Mr. Kim nodded, and after taking attendance, he led his students to the male locker rooms, while Devin went to the female locker rooms to accompany the girls studying at Sakura Bushido. Are you nervous? The young girl asked, looking at the older girls around her. You shouldn't be, Devin won a tournament when she was 11, beating a girl many years older than her. Trust yourself, and you'll win, that's for sure. Sophia, who was a friend of Devin, was more aware of the martial arts school's history, so she encouraged the other scared girls. Devin smiled slightly at these words and said, The important thing is not to win, but to know that you've done your best. At that moment, Aisha, who had changed into a black suit, passed by Devin. Before leaving the locker rooms, she stopped, turned around, and said, Do you know if Dash will be here to watch the competition? Devin furrowed her eyebrows upon hearing someone mention Dash. When she turned her gaze, she saw the only woman from Cobra Kai, so she relaxed, softened her look, and said, He should be back in the next few days, but he won't be present. Many from Cobra Kai would have liked to face him. Well, good luck in the competition. Aisha had no issues with Devin, so knowing she was a good girl and Dash's girlfriend, she wanted to wish her good luck. Devin nodded and thought, if Dash participates, no one in this place would have a chance to beat him. Alright, let's go to our meeting point to get ready to go out. Yes. At that moment, all that was on Devin's mind was winning. Please, everyone take your seats. The competition will begin in a moment. If you're not comfortable, we don't have to stay long, we just need to watch a few fights and leave. The LaRusso family, obligated to attend as one of the sponsors, entered the building where the tournament would take place. There they are. An Asian-looking man, along with other adults, approached Daniel and said while applauding, the former champion in person. Good to see you Daniel. After finishing greeting the people, Daniel looked at a poster with his image from the 84 championship and fell silent, contemplating the memories that rushed to his mind in a few seconds. 
To the right, there were more posters, all of which belonged to the star of recent years, who had won the previous five tournaments in the male division. Legends are surpassed. An elderly man looked at the posters and said, a pity that the kid won't compete. I heard from my friend in Japan that there was recently a tournament there where young Dash competed, and as far as we know, he emerged as the winner. Daniel turned his head, and just as he was about to ask how the man knew something, the elderly man had already left. Dash isn't participating. They had thought it would be a good idea for Dash to defeat Cobra Kai in the competition, but now that he's not participating, the chances of Cobra Kai's growth continue to increase, and that's not good at all. Let's go Daniel. The competition is about to start. Daniel shook his head and walked towards his wife with the others who were waiting for him. Unlike other competitions, the audience had been increasing after the incredible fight Sakura Bushido had been showcasing. Right now, the venue for this tournament was one with a very abundant audience. Welcome to the 50th annual All Valley Karate Championship under 18. The excited presenter shouted, thrilled to have the opportunity to present this magnificent tournament that was growing every year. Do you love the mats? Hahaha. <laughs> Alright, let's start by welcoming all the local dojos competing today. From Granada, we have Shotokan Tiger. From the south, we have Goji Kai. While the presentation of numerous dojos was taking place, Daniel entered with his family and said with a smile, Front row seats, your father still has influence in this tournament, even if he's not as famous anymore. Amanda greeted a woman beside her as she recognized her. Oh, hi Patricia, you've worked hard this year. My son has worked hard to beat the champion he has always wanted to surpass. I must support him as his mother. At that moment, the presenter smiled and said, Fighting from Topanga, we have Topanga Karate. That's it, son, kick their butts. From Reseda, returning to the tournament, we have. At that moment, the name Cobra Kai started to be heard from the entrance of the arena, and everyone began to shout at such a sudden change of emotions. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. The presenter shouted, That's what I call a good entrance, and a tough name for a dojo. Let's welcome Cobra Kai. Go, Hawk. After introducing most of the dojos, the presenter adjusted his voice and shouted, This dojo needs no introduction, led by Sensei Kim from the beautiful Sakura Trees. Give it up for Sakura Bushido Dojo, along with its defending female competitor in the women's division, Devin Lee, who, along with her other titles, has won 8 championships in total only in the valley. When everyone heard Sakura Bushido's terrifying titles only in the valley, many who knew their excellent performance in combat, began to celebrate upon seeing their favorite dojo. Has 8 all-valley championships. I thought having two was an incredible thing, Eli murmured, shifting his gaze towards the students of Sakura Bushido. Johnny, who was focused on wanting his students to win this tournament, couldn't help but look away, and be surprised just by seeing Devin Lee, one of the champions from the previous year. We can win this year since Dash isn't participating, we would have an extra year to enter and be able to beat him in the next one. Eli said, very excited as he clenched his fists with emotion. Miguel, on the side, didn't believe so much effort was needed to beat Dash, but still, he said nothing and remained silent throughout. And finally, participating without affiliation, we have Robbie Keane. The presenter took a few steps forward and said, Alright, friends, get ready, it's karate time. Devin Lee in front of the women turned around and said, Slow stretches, five repetitions. Yes. Mr. Kim looked at the new guys who were nervous and said, It's normal to feel nervous, follow the basic warm-ups and get ready for the preliminaries. Yes sensei. Devin Lee vs. Anna Smith. Devin adjusted her black headband to fix her hair, and walked towards the blue mat just a few meters away. Mr. Kim approached Devin and nodded at her. Be careful not to overextend your kicks, keep the distance, and you know how to handle the rest. Understood, Mr. Kim. Devin nodded with a serious look as she walked towards the mat. The referee looked at the two female competitors and said, You know how this goes, three points to win, ready. Attention, Bo, face each other, Bo. Fight. Devin looked at her opponent, a rather thin girl, but she never let her guard down, and, as soon as the fight began, took the initiative with long-distance kicks. Now. Just as Anna's voice faded, she stepped forward to close the distance between her and Devin, but the sudden kicks made her step back. Taking charge of overwhelming her opponent, Devin maneuvered her advance with great ease, and after a few more kicks, she managed to land one on Anna's head, causing her to retreat. Point. After scoring her point, Devin stepped back, looked at Anna on the ground, and said, If you're going to cry over such a soft hit, get out of my sight. Anna looked up, evidently angry. She knew the girl in front of her had a good attitude, but Devin completely changed after the match started, which puzzled her. Are you okay? The referee looked at Anna, who had stood up, and asked her to show her face to continue the match. I'm fine Anna said, looking at Devin even more seriously. She felt angry and wanted to continue the fight to redeem herself. Ready. Fight. When the referee's words faded, Devin's advance suddenly changed. She stepped forward, putting aside her powerful kicks. Seeing a punch coming towards her face, she shifted her stance, raised her defense, and after gaining control at close range, closed the fingers of her fist and hit on his stomach. 
Haku. Spitting out a strong breath, Ana knew that this hit was the end of everything she had entered this tournament for. She hated losing in this way, but she was facing the defensive champion of this year. Point. Devon, who saw this, sighed. There were indeed good fighters, but in this tournament, she always found it challenging to encounter women who had trained since childhood, and had good combat experience. The only times she had lost were in championships in China, which was entirely different from the fights taking place here. Let's finish this quickly, Devon thought as she adjusted her position once again in her corner. Anna, who didn't want to give up, could only attack aggressively without considering anything else. Ready. Fight. Devon expelled air from her lungs, and after taking a breath again, she ran towards Anna with a straight kick that, as expected, failed. She moved her left hand to prevent Anna from attacking her side, and both engaged in a slightly more exciting fight for a few moments. Thud. 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 With a serene expression on her face, Devon's hands dodged Anna's punches, and this lasted for a few minutes before Anna began to show signs of wanting to stop. When Devon knew she was being too demanding, she tried to calm down and appreciate her opponent's work more to participate in this tournament. At least she wanted to give them the opportunity to feel a fight, so hopefully, next year they could come back to challenge her again but stronger. But knowing that she was making the fight longer, Devon threw a punch at first sight, and just when Anna raised her guard to defend herself, she saw how Devon stopped her kick, and instead launched a kick. Now. Point Devon Lee wins. After landing the final blow, Devon did not immediately return to her corner, but walked towards Anna and extended her hand to help her up. Surely, you'll do better next year, I'll be waiting. Anna had no words to say, she simply watched Devon's back. Due to the sensation this fight left her with, she clenched her fists, smiled through tears, and muttered, I'll see you next year. As she stepped down from the mat, Devon looked at Samantha, who had been watching her match, and she smiled slightly. Samantha, from afar, averted her gaze. She knew Devon had hinted that she had always been waiting for her but never showed up. After her first and only tournament, Samantha did not return to karate, but the same did not happen with Devon, who had won three championships in the last five years. Well done, Devon. Do you want a drink? Mr. Kim congratulated Devon and asked as she approached. Devon shook her head and instead asked, how are things in the men's division? We're winning, many have won their first match, but others have lost Mr. Kim expected this, it was normal in competitions. As their master, his only job is to make them feel good. Devon didn't say anything else, she sat down and began to watch the matches before she continued fighting. Due to the two divisions, the preliminary fights meant nothing, as the real tournament started in the quarterfinals. Point, winner Lucia from Sakura Bushido. Point, winner Miguel Diaz from Cobra Kai. Point, Sophie Gonzalez from Sakura Bushido. Point, Robbie Keane unaffiliated. The fights progressed one by one without stopping for some time. It's not going as well as we expected. Devon Lee was looking at the results of the latest Sakura Bushido roster, and felt a bit disappointed to learn that many hadn't been able to pass the preliminaries. Sophia walked towards her friend and said, Well, I thought the fights would be much more exciting, but so far, I haven't had any problems. But the expected results are varying a lot in the men's competition. Devon thought this was due to Dash's absence, who was one of the figures that inspired many just with his presence. After Devon's next preliminaries fights, the tournament continued. The 16 finalists, half men and half women, were all quite skilled among the new fighters from the dojos that had been participating in this tournament for many years. Most had received positive feedback, which caught the interest of the audience. Furthermore, their backgrounds were quite diverse, so the crowd occasionally didn't pay much attention. In a few more minutes, the last five rounds of the preliminaries concluded. As expected, four of the male finalists were from Sakura Bushido, two from Topanga Karate, two from Cobra Kai, and one unaffiliated. On the other hand, the female division of Sakura Bushido had only three finalists out of the eight women in total, most of whom were from other more varied dojos. As the finalists were announced, the atmosphere of the crowd lit up. Everyone knew that the next fights were the true highlights of the competition. After the draw, all competitors were placed on the leaderboard for the quarterfinals, and everyone waited in silence for the venue to be cleared for the featured matches. This time, Devon's opponent was a girl named Emma Miller from Topanga Karate. According to Mr. Kim's instructions, she knew perfectly well that Emma handled kicks excellently, just like her, and she couldn't wait to face her. The two proceeded to fight after taking their positions, and in the end, the result was quite surprising. Emma's kicks couldn't withstand Devon's brutal kicks, which ended up injuring her, but surprisingly, didn't break any bones. Because of this, Devon easily became one of the first semi-finalists. As for the other Sakura Bushido girls, only Sophia advanced to the semi-final, and her opponent was a girl named Aisha from Cobra Kai. As for the boys, only Liam James from Sakura Bushido managed to reach the semi-final. The others belonged to different affiliations, except for Robbie, who had no affiliation. Nothing special happened during the duels, Eli, known as Hawk, had a good fight, but ultimately lost to Xander Stone, who came on strong this year. 
The next match was of interest to the entire audience. Even Devon was interested because it featured the only boy from Sakura Bushido, Liam James, facing Miguel Diaz from Cobra Kai. The two in this tournament were considered the best fighters due to their impressive fight so far. Nevertheless, now the two were about to face each other in the semi-finals to secure a spot in the final. May the best win, Cobra Boy. Liam smiled weakly as he saw Miguel step onto the map. Miguel didn't respond, his attitude was a bit frowned upon by James, but as he understood, there were all kinds of fighters in the tournaments, so he speculated that Miguel was the bad guy he would try to beat. Ready. Ready, Bo, look at each other, Bo. Fight. Just as Miguel finished hearing the referee's announcement, he quickly started the fight, demonstrating his great speed. Be careful, Liam. Devon encouraged the only boy, who, though not very outstanding in combat, was very calculated, and this had brought him to the semifinals. As Miguel advanced, Liam's expression became serious, and he let out a fierce scream not in line with his calm exterior. Did they just eliminate the Sakura Bushido boys before the final? That has never happened in the last five years. Daniel LaRusso looked at the crowd's comments and said, From what I heard, they are only competing with boys who have been training for less than a year. This result is normal. Samantha looked at her father and said, I heard Dash is out. It's not to discriminate against Sakura Bushido fighters, but without their star fighters, this should be expected. Why aren't the more experienced ones participating? They are preparing for more important tournaments, that's what they said Daniel knew it was understandable, considering the previous years and observing the last fights, all of which were won by Sakura Bushido. But now, when he needed them the most, they were participating, causing some discomfort. The next fight was Sophia's, who lost due to the difference in strength against Aisha from Cobra Kai. Unable to do much to harm her opponent, Sophia turned dejectedly to her Sakura Bushido teammates. She's really strong. How was I supposed to do anything when she knocked me off the mat with just one punch? Sophia complained to Devin, who smiled ironically. Devin, seeing that the next fight was about to start, said, You should have focused on your speed. You wanted to hurt her and show your strength, so you left yourself exposed. Should I increase my muscle mass this year? Sophia looked at her slender arms and asked Devin, who seemed to be in better physical condition than her. Devin turned her head and said, If you become muscular, only a select group of men will approach you to ask you out. Improve your strength and technique, that would be enough. Is your blue knight coming back today? Dash. Devin asked this unconsciously. Sophia smiled curiously and said, Ah, how sweet, you consider Dash as your blue prince. I never thought the toughest girl in Sakura Bushido would be deeply in love with her boyfriend. Would envy. Devin sighed slightly. It wasn't a secret that she and Dash were a couple, so she usually ignored the silly jokes that Sophia frequently made. Point, winner Robbie Keane. The referee shouted, pointing to the winner of the match, which was challenging to determine. Sophia looked at Robbie and said, that guy is handsome. Should I invite him to Sakura Bushido? Do whatever you want, but don't bother me. Now it's time for the presentation of the finalists. Devin, as a finalist, walked alongside Mr. Kim, who was talking to the organizers. At that moment, there was a pause, and the presenter walked to the center of the mat and said, yes, applause for all the competitors. Everyone deserves a big round of applause for these incredible fights. We've had great fights today, but we've reached the finals, and I want to introduce them to you up close. In the men's division, we have Miguel Diaz from Cobra Kai, a dojo that rises from the ashes like a phoenix, positioning itself in the final alongside Aisha Robinson from the women's division. The audience applauded, seeing two finalists from the same dojo, recalling the beginnings of Devon and Dash, who were in the same situation before becoming winners. As a finalist in the men's division, we have Robbie Keane, who without any predictions, has emerged from the darkness to be in the final, climbing step by step to glory. Daniel looked at Robbie with many complicated feelings, after all, the fact that he had used him to harm his father was something hard to overlook. Defending the title of the women's division this year, we have Devin Lee from Sakura Bushido, who has been a three-time champion, and has so far won numerous foreign tournaments. Go Devin, win. We have our hopes in you. The presenter also applauded amid the crowd's cheers and asked privately, do you want to say a few words? Devin hesitated for a moment, but after hearing the encouragement from her teammates, she approached and took the microphone. I'm very happy that there is more competition in this tournament today, on its 50th anniversary. Although many expected Dash to participate in this tournament, I want to highlight the great work that everyone has done to reach the final. And don't forget, martial arts are a unique discipline that can be learned in life, and should only be used for special competitions. I hope everyone keeps that in mind when learning or knowing a contact sport. With these words, Devon wanted to reach many people and prevent them from staining karate in the valley with foolish fights, but she knew that her good advice would likely be of little use. There she is, the three-time winner Devon Lee from Sakura Bushido. The presenter shouted, pointing to Devon, who smiled faintly. Alright, let's start with the final of the women's division. Let's give a round of applause to the competitors. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, 
I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.